games as they finish up the national anthem here before the girls game. Girls will play first, boys will be second here at Battle High School. So here we are, we're getting ready for the starting lineups. Glad you could join us here on a Friday night in late February. District time coming up very, very soon for all these teams. We're gonna have the starting lineups. Hickman 19 and four on the season. They will be in the road black uniforms with the gold numerals. It'll be Jayla Griffith, Ella Rogers, Ashton Klusmeyer, Saray Stemmons, and Addie Schultz. That's going to be the starting five for Morgan Scott and the Cupies tonight. And as I mentioned, 19 and four on the year. The last time we saw them, it was a tough two point last second buzzer beating loss against Rockbridge, but they've rebounded since then. Their last game, they beat Cardinal Ritter 45 31. The starting lineup for the Battle Spartans coming up now. Battle will be wearing the white uniforms with the blue numerals. And it'll be Boo Anderson starting things off. Malia Miller will play a guard. She wears number two. Taylor Robinson, a sophomore, wears number three, another guard. Kaylin Johnson, KJ they call her, just honored her for her 1,000th point. Just the second battle player to reach that plateau. And then Jalea Brookins, number 45, in the starting lineup tonight for the Spartans. So again, it'll be Anderson, Miller, Robinson, Johnson, and Brookins for the Spartans. Griffith, Rogers, Klusmeyer, Stemmons, and Schultz for Hickman. Battle comes in at 17 and 6 overall, and they beat St. James the last time out on Tuesday night. 45-39. Glad to be joined by our producer engineer, John Hook. Cooper Bryant, our director tonight. Camera people, Noah Ellitson, Matt Riley, and Asher Marshman. My name is Bo Bayman. Eric Jones supervising as well tonight. Glad to have everybody here from the networks of Mid-Missouri. Hickman with the first possession tonight. They'll work it around. That's Griffith. Griffith back up top. It's just been perimeter play so far. Rodgers wants to go inside, does Schultz to Griffith for three, a little bit short. Rebound, grab, and here come the Spartans and they come quickly. Rebound is grabbed by Miller, Malia Miller. And now they set up with Robinson. Robinson looks for a screen, gets it, tries free throw line jumper, a little strong. Off the back iron, no good. Rebounded by Schultz of Hickman. And here come the QPs. Battle playing a little 2-3 zone to start things off. Ella Rogers got caught picking up the basketball. Morgan Scott, the head coach for Hickman, yells to her team as they will try to reset the offense. Schultz in and out. Griffith again for three. That one in the corner, too strong. And the rebound falls to the Spartans and bringing it up is Boo Anderson. Anderson drives. Hands it off to KJ. And now on the outside of Robinson. Kaylin Johnson will come set a screen. And now way out top, it's Brookins who sets a screen. Johnson will key a three. That one too strong. Both teams start 0 for 2. Here in the proceedings, Rogers with a step. It's blocked, Schultz grabs the rebound, she misses. And it's Brookins with the rebound. Still no score, just about two minutes into the first. Battle with a big turnaround this year at 17 and six. There's a drive, that ball no good. Still scoreless, Rogers will bring it up. It's a three on two. Stemmons wants to go far corner to Klusmeyer and Hickman's gonna have to reset. Klusmeyer tees a three. That one hits the bottom of the net. And Ashton Klusmeyer has three, and Hickman is up three zip. The Spartans beat Rockbridge for the first time in program history this year. And as we mentioned, Rockbridge beat Hickman at the buzzer, a buzzer beater. So the district 
tournament is just going to be wild between these teams, Rockbridge and the teams in Kansas City. That three no good. A great rebound, however, and it'll go off of Griffith out of bounds. Great job by Taylor Robinson to grab that carom. That was Boo Anderson with the three that missed, and Spartan still looking for their first bucket here tonight. Anderson takes the inbound. I should say Robinson from Anderson, and she'll set it up. Try to get in the corner to Johnson. Johnson's three ball off the front of the rim, no good. Kaylin Johnson has missed a couple. Hickman comes back quickly. Dustin Young calls for his defensive set. Rogers pounds it twice with the right hand. 4.45 to go here in the first. Glad he could join us on the networks of Mid-Missouri. That pass batted away. And now a breakaway for Robinson. Robinson lays it off the glass too strong. And it's no good. And Rogers with the rebound. Here's a drive by Griffith. A beautiful drive. Stayed under control. Laid it off the glass. And Jayla Griffith has two points. And it's 5-0 Hickman. There's a left-handed drive nicely by Boo Anderson. And finally, the Spartans are on the board. Rogers tees a three on the other end. It's short. And then she's going to try to follow her shot, but she's going to pick up the first personal foul. So really, we've played half the quarter, and there's been a ton of action back and forth. Not a lot of whistles, but nevertheless, it has really been... Good play, just not a lot of shot making. Nautica Washington, wearing number four for battle, has checked into the game. 5-2 Hickman, more than halfway through the first. Washington hands it off. Anderson, now a three ball, and that one is good by Malia Miller. Miller ties the game at five. It's a quick 5-0 run for the Spartans, and we're all knotted up. Loosemeyer at the free throw line, gives it to Griffith. Griffith drives, she's cut off nicely. Stemmons flashed for a minute, but Kloosmeyer decided to give it to Saray. Now it's Kloosmeyer again. They want to go down low, do the Cupies. Rogers in the corner, three ball no good. Rebound, fought for, rolls to Robinson. Robinson with a little two on three break, she'll back it out. Good decision there. Anderson says, let's set things up. And Dustin Young says, let's go to work. They hand it off to Taylor Robinson, the sophomore guard. They like to run this on the perimeter. It's just a little handoff. Here's Washington, free throw line jumper. Got it. Battle with its first lead tonight, 7-5, to five, and a timeout by Hickman. Morgan Scott has seen her team give up seven straight points. And with 2.35 to go in the first, she'll have a 30-second timeout with the Spartans leading at 7-5. So both teams started slowly, but now they're starting to heat up a little bit. QP scored the first five points of the game. The Spartans have battled back with the next seven and lead it by a bucket. And a good bucket there by Nautica Washington. Her first... She has two, Boo Anderson has two, and the three ball by Malia Miller. As for Hickman, it was a three-pointer from Klusmeyer and Jayla Griffith with the drive in the lane. So 7-5, 2.35 to go. And maybe this was more than a 30-second timeout. I think it may have turned into a full timeout here. But nevertheless, we're ready to go. Checking into the game for Hickman, Lucy Elfrink. Caroline Eastman also checking in. So it'll be Griffith, Stemmons, Eastman, Elfrink, and Klusmeyer. Schultz gets a break. As does Ella Rogers. Going inside, Klusmeyer wanted to go across court, couldn't. Great cut by Stemmons out to Eastman. Three ball. 
Rattles around, no good. Just a little bit short. And Battle has the rebound in the corner. Another three put up. That one is short as well by Miller. That ball's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Spartans. Washington will key it in. She's in there with Brookins. KJ Johnson in there as well. And Miller. Washington, a little, I'd say 12 footer won't go. The rebound by Elfring gives it up to Griffith. Jayla Griffith pounds it left hand, now right hand switching. Good defense there by the Spartans to get back. Stemmons with it. Dribbles into the corner and into trouble, and she throws it away. Robinson will pick it up. She goes into the defense, but good defense there. Stemmons collects the rebound, and here come the Cupies. And if they run, they got a little break here. Griffith in the corner to Eastman, and now Stemmons a three. No good. And it's Kaylin Johnson with the rebound. 120 to play here in the first. Miller another three, rattles no good. And a rebound by Johnson. Johnson gets it back. She tees a three, that one is good. And it's 10-5 and a 10-0 run by Battle. Johnson now with three. And the Cupies haven't scored in a while. Klusmeyer turns, fires it short. Rebounded by Brookins. She'll hand off to Washington and here come the Spartans again. Under 40 to play here in the first. Hickman switching to a little zone here, 2-3. Taylor Robinson picks up her dribble, but it looks like the Spartans may play for the final shot until Johnson breaks free, and it's good for another three. 13 in a row for the Spartans. They lead it by eight. This was once a 5-0 game for Hickman. 13 in a row with 10 seconds left. Stemmons on the far side. Wants to go inside. Washington. Oh, that's not a good foul with three and a half seconds to go. Way away from the basket. Obviously, it's just the team's first, so there's no shooting. But it gives Hickman a chance here. With three, with two, they don't know it. Three ball is up and it's short. And that'll do it. End of the first quarter, it's been all battle. Hickman started out 5-0. It's 13 in a row for the Spartans. They lead it 13-5. You're watching the game of the week right here on KZOU. Talk to State Farm agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. What if you could graduate without student loan debt? What if you could have the college experience close to home? What if you could have hands-on training from highly skilled faculty? What if you could become the person you were meant to be? What if MACC was the college for you? Attention CPAP users with sleep apnea. You may have heard about the importance of cleaning your CPAP mask and supplies regularly, but we can't stress enough the importance of replacing your old CPAP supplies every 90 days to prevent infections and improve your overall health. With Medicare and private insurance, you may qualify to receive regular replacement supplies with free home delivery at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Improve your sleep and take control of your health with new Medicare-covered CPAP supplies every three months. Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. Welcome back to Battle High School, everybody. After one quarter, Battle leads Hickman in the girls' game 13 to 5. It's a 13 0 run for Battle as we start the second quarter. Glad you could join us on KZOU. My name is Bo Bayman, and it's good to have you for the high school game of the week. Kaylin Johnson misses a three. 
She connected on two in the first quarter. Going down low is Hickman. Inside, outside, but nothing doing. Trying to get it to Addie Schultz. Schultz gives it up to Rogers. Rogers fires it up, and it is no good. It's batted out of bounds. It'll stay with the Cupies. Cupies trying to break a 13-0 run. Inside to Klusmeyer. Klusmeyer bumped, uses it the window, and scores. Klusmeyer has five of the Cupies' seven points. Washington will hand off to Brookins. Battle's going to run its offense again. Kaylin Johnson uses a screen. Guarded by Griffith, and Griffith got her on the arm. Jayla Griffith got her. Let's see if it's a shooting foul. It will be. KJ Johnson will go to the line for two. Just the first on Griffith, the second team foul on the Cupies. Johnson's first rattles out. Almost halfway down and came back out. One team foul on the Spartans, two on the Cupies. Through nine minutes of play already in the first half. Second one is in the air. That one rattles out too. And a good rebound by Addie Schultz to go over the top. She tries to get it to Stemmons and Stemmons has it poked away from her and out of bounds. Cupies will keep it. Down six, 13-7. Griffith runs it up. They go inside to Schultz. Stemmons drives. Tries to get it to Klusmeyer. Now back out to Rogers. Hickman offense looks a little disjointed right now. Klusmeyer drives. Stemmons jumper in and out. No good. Rebounded by Brookins. And here comes Washington. And Battle will reset the offense with 6.24 to go. Washington gets a screen. Had an opening. Instead gives it up. That's Robinson for three. No good. Falls on the ground. Klusmeyer picks it up. And now Griffith has it. Griffith needs a little help. It's tapped away. Klusmeyer has it. Battle's been putting on some pressure. And it's been... Really rattling the QP. Stemmons, Klusmeyer, nice catch, and she'll score. Four in a row for the QPs. And it's now 13 to 9. Boo Anderson sees an opening. Left handed layup, good. Got around Stemmons and scored it. Battle's been putting on that pressure. Taylor Robinson just guarding the ball when she can. Griffith to Rogers. Rogers nearly traveled. And she throws it away. Right to Johnson. Kaylin Johnson. Oh, a nice crossover. Right hand layup, no good. Rogers has it. Three on two if they hurry. Washington gets in the way, and it's going to be a foul. That's the second on Washington. So she'll have to come take a seat. That's her second, the team's second. So it'll remain Hickman basketball exactly five minutes to play before half. Klusmeyer catches. Schultz along three, that's off to the right, no good. Here comes Robinson. Robinson will set things back up. Guarded by Stemmons. Anderson hands it off to Johnson. Anderson drive, baseline. Now some good ball movement. And that with three is good by Taylor Robinson. And it's gonna be a full timeout here for Hickman. As the three ball goes down and the three's been hitting tonight. 
for the Battle Spartans. 18 to nine now in favor of Battle. Let's see, Johnson has two threes. Robinson has a three, Miller has a three. So that's four made threes already for 12 of the 18 points. Anderson has a couple of layups at Nautica Washington with the free throw line jumper. So just as Hickman gets to within four, it's five quick ones again for battle and the Spartans extend that lead back to nine. It's 18 to nine. And you can see that Morgan Scott down in the Hickman huddle is telling her team, hey, we gotta be a little bit better, just a little bit more secure and more confident with the basketball. She's gonna go out there and she's gonna have Schultz, Klusmeyer, Griffith, Elfrink, and Eastman. So taking a seat right now. Oh, Elfrink is on the bench, my mistake. Rogers is out, Eastman is in for Rogers. So Stemmen stays in. For battle, Miller's still out there, as is Johnson. Boo Anderson, Taylor Robinson. And down low is Lexi Bryan. She's in there now, we're in number 33. Griffith drives, a little teardrop won't go. Schultz has it, nearly walks, gets it outside. Stemmons with the drive, too hard off the glass, and it falls right to Robinson. And Robinson runs the other way. Three ball put up by Anderson, no good. Stemmons with the carom. Under four to go before half. Schultz off the window, no good. Rebound falls right to Malia Miller. Miller hands it off to Anderson. There's been a lot of running going on in this game and it looks like they're a little tired at this time. There's Miller for three, got it. Malia Miller with her second three, and it's 21 to nine, Spartans. The two three really getting the QP's problems. There's Addie Schultz, that's a long two, but Schultz makes it and finally puts the QP's in double figures. 10 point lead for Battle. Battle has been deadly from beyond the arc. Johnson thought about it. Now drives into the lane and she'll get the roll on that one. Johnson gets the two and a smart decision to not pull the trigger on the three. Great pass as Schultz is fouled underneath. But KJ Johnson with a good job of pulling back the three, putting the two in the lane and knocking it down. Addie Schultz going to the line. She made her first bucket just a moment ago. Her first free throws in the air and in the bucket. She'll get a second. Nautica Washington back in as is Jalea Brookins. Schultz second free throw, also good. And it'll be Lucy Elfring checking in for Schultz for the Cupies. 23-13 in favor of battle here. 2.35 to go before halftime. KJ Johnson tries to get it inside. It's on the ground, it'll be a jump ball. Brookins was there, as was Elfrink. Let's see who gets it on the alternating possession. It'll be Hickman. And now you're gonna see battle pick up the full court press. And they're gonna try to trap as they go down the floor. Klusmeyer to Stemmons, Stemmons gets it. Elfrink to Eastman, and Eastman has to back it back out. Now Klusmeyer turns it over, Washington takes it away. She's got a trailing player, and it's turned over again, Griffith has it. Griffith pounds it, goes right down central and scores. Took it herself, and it's 23-15. Two minutes to play. Dustin Young, the head coach of battle, calls out a play for his team. Johnson in the corner. 
Now it's Robinson. Now back to Johnson. That one no good. Rebounded by Elfrink. And Elfrink will try to dribble it up. It's poked away from her, and she's on the ground. And it's going to be a jump ball, which will go back to battle. And a quick timeout here by Dustin Young of battle with 1.40 to go before halftime and an eight-point Spartan advantage. The Spartans have been hitting the shots from outside and they've built a eight-point advantage. Leading the way is Johnson. Kaylin Johnson has eight, six points on two threes from Malia Miller. They have 14, which is almost enough to beat the Cupies. Cupies, half of their points are coming from Ashton Klusmeyer. She has seven and four for Addie Schultz. And four for Jayla Griffith, the only three that have scored for Hickman here tonight. Glad you could join us right here on the Networks of Mid-Missouri. My name is Bo Bayman. Glad to be with you as the boys will play next after this game and another key C-Mac game as the crowd continues to file in here at Battle High School. Robinson gives it up. They'll wheel it around to Boo Anderson. That one's at the feet of Washington. Washington gives it up. Now Miller's open. And the Cupies scramble back on defense. And battle will reset. Miller in the corner. Three ball, no good. Rebounded by Stemmons with 1.15 to go. Klusmeyer travels. She wanted to give it up to... Griffith and Griffith turned her back right at that moment when she was about to pass it. And she was caught holding the pumpkin. 70 seconds to play first half. Battle probably will run some clock here. Oh, Miller's gonna shoot a three, top of the key. No good, and that one's tipped out of bounds by Johnson. It'll go back to Hickman. Jalea Brookins checks back in. Kaylin Johnson will come out. Here's Griffith. Over to Elfrink. Now Eastman back to Elfrink. Now it looks like Hickman wants to slow things down, but down eight, they should not slow it down. They should go right after it. Elfrink's open it. In the corner, couldn't do anything with it. Klusmeyer flashes. Now a three from Griffith, and it rattles around and goes. What a big shot by Jayla Griffith. It's a five-point game. Dustin Young calls for his team to play for the last shot with 17 seconds to go. Anderson, guarded by Eastman, picks up her dribble. Miller... Now Robinson with five seconds to go. Robinson looking for something, looks up at the clock. No, she has to shoot. She does, and it goes off the glass and in. Right at the buzzer. A three-pointer makes it 26-18 in favor of the Spartans. Another three ball goes down. What a big shot there by Taylor Robinson. Robinson looked at the clock with about, I'm gonna say four or three seconds left, saw that she had to throw up a prayer. The prayer's answered off of the glass and in. And it's 26 to 18 in favor of the Spartans here at the half. What a first half for battle, especially from the outside. They looked really good shooting the ball from deep. We'll take a quick timeout here at halftime on the high school game of the week, it's Battle 26, Hickman 18. You're watching the game of the week right here on KZOU. Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. Oh my gosh, wow, who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs>
They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. It's called Plexiderm. Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video, and all he uses is a small amount, and that's how easy it is. And I did this to my father. We were at home. Four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. I'm Neela. I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. Plexiderm makes you feel as good outside as you do inside. Honestly, God, it's amazing. There's nothing there. Like, the bags are gone. Not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. You can get Plexiderm for up to 50% off. Order yours at Plexiderm.com or call the number on your screen. Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. Welcome back to high, uh, Battle High School, everybody. At the halftime of the girls' game, it's Battle 26, Hickman 18. Again, Battle came in with a 17 and 6 record. And Hickman was 19 and 4, but because of the outside shot, it's been a good first half so far for the Spartans as they lead it by 8. And ironically, Battle scored 13 points in the first quarter, 13 points in the second quarter. Hickman scored 13 points in the second quarter, but only five in the first, and that's the difference as the Spartans lead it by eight, 26 to 18. The outside shooting has been dynamite for the Spartans. Malia Miller with a couple of threes, Taylor Robinson a couple of threes, including the one at the buzzer to make it a, an eight point advantage. Kaylin Johnson had a three, she has eight points for the Cupies. They're led by a couple of players. Jayla Griffith has seven, Ashton Klusmeyer also with seven. So that's 14 of the 18. The only other Hickman Cupie to score is Addie Schultz. She's the six foot center. And she's got a bucket and two free throws for four. So just three players have scored so far for Hickman. As you can see on the floor, that's the boys. Just a little practice here. That'll be our next game coming up here at Battle. You don't get too many of these anymore, and it's kind of nice when you have the girls in the boys game as a C-Mac doubleheader. But we have it tonight, and it's funny that this is our final one on the networks of mid-Missouri already. As we mentioned, district play is coming up. The state tournament not far. It's, it's go time for a lot of these teams. We saw Hickman boys lose to Rockbridge earlier this week. Right here on KZOU. And we'll see how they rebound. And meanwhile, the Spartans on an 11 game winning streak. So they are red hot and playing great basketball, especially at home. But we're at halftime now of the girls' game, and it's Battle 26, Hickman 18. We'll take another break, and when we come back, we'll get you ready for the second half. You're watching the Game of the Week right here on KZOU. Is there a power struggle in your home? Now there's Spin Power, the ultimate smart charging station. Brought to you by Bell & Howell. Bell & Howell Spin Power lets you conveniently charge all of your electronics. And with our rapid smart charging technology, devices are charged in a flash. Our smart control ports detect your connected devices for rapid, optimal charging. Spin Power Smart Charging Station is also a surge protector with four outlets and six smart USB ports. Spin Power by Bell & Howell has a sleek and convenient 40-inch extendable Core. Rapidly charge up to 10 devices at the same time, anywhere in your home. Call or go online to get your Spin Power by Bell & Howell for the low, low price of just two easy payments of $14.99. Spin Power comes with a 10-year warranty. But wait, you can double the offer. Just pay a separate fee. And shipping is free. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-348-9790 or go to buyspinpower.com. So call 1-800-348-9790 or order online at buyspinpower.com. In times of economic uncertainty and chaos, your money means nothing. You may not even be able to get it from your bank or ATM. What you can bank on is gold and silver. 
gold and silver have been a reliable and trusted form of currency for thousands of years. Call the gold hotline now and learn how to protect your money and your assets with gold and silver. Protect your money from the next market crash with gold and silver. Call now for your free gold guide. Welcome back to Battle High School, our game of the week in game one of two here tonight. Glad you could join us on KZOU at the half. It's the Battle Girls leading the Hickman Girls 26 to 18. A 13-0 run to end the first quarter. Really the difference so far as Hickman led the game 5-0. But then Battle went on a 13-0 run to end the first. And that eight points is the difference now. 26-18 Spartans as we get set for half number two. I would imagine the Spartans want to continue to try to work things underneath and inside. Meanwhile, Hickman's gonna just have to start knocking down some shots. Remember, there was a lot of missed shots to open this game in the first quarter. We stayed 0-0 for over two minutes. And so the shot making will have to improve for both teams. And really, whichever team does that here in the second half, is probably going to take home a key C-MAC victory. It'll be an interesting second half, to say the least. The Spartans lead it by eight. And the Cupians are going to have to come out of the locker room, lock down that defense, and start making some buckets. The second half comes your way next. We'll take our final break of halftime. Again, our score at half, Battle 26, Hickman 18. You're watching the Game of the Week right here on KZOU. Don't think about what, comes after what, if what came before. you could graduate without student loan debt? Knees, what if you could have the college experience close to home? What if you could have hands-on training from highly skilled faculty? What if? you could become the person you were meant to be. What if MACC was the college for you? Does shopping for bladder control products have you feeling like you need someone to be on the lookout for you? Now you have your privacy back. We're HDIS and we home deliver bladder control products directly to you. We're always on the lookout for you. You get free shipping in plain unmarked boxes so your private matters stay private. We understand how you feel. For over 35 years, we've delivered bladder control products to millions of Americans, just like you. You don't have to worry about incontinence any longer. Call now for your free product sample pack and over $45 in money-saving coupons. At HDIS, we're always in stock. We carry all brands in hundreds of styles and sizes. You'll be sure to get what you need, guaranteed. For your free sample pack with your free catalog and $45 in money-saving coupons and free product samples, call 800-467-5049. That's 800-467-5049. Welcome back to Battle High School. We're getting ready for the third quarter here between the Battle Girls and the Hickman Girls. Battle leads it by eight. My name is Bo Bayman. Our producer engineer is John Hook. Cooper Bryant punching the buttons, doing an excellent job as our director of cameras. Noah Ellitson, Matt Riley, Asher Marshman on the cameras tonight. Also want to thank Curtis Varnes, the general manager of the Networks of Mid-Missouri. He does a great job over there, my good friend Curtis. And we're glad that he could bring you some high school basketball here during the season. Our last one here tonight, and it proves to be a very good double header between Hickman and Battle. So we're getting set for the third quarter. Hickman trails 26-18. Hickman's gonna start with Schultz, Stemmons, Klusmeyer, Ella Rogers, and Jayla Griffith. Same starting five. And let's see, yep, Battle's gonna go with their starting five as well. Boo Anderson, Malia Miller, Taylor Robinson, Kaylin Johnson, and Jalea Brooks. It will be Hickman basketball as we kick things off. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. We're underway. Griffith gives it up to Stemmons. Stemmons stops, pops, that one's short. 
Never had a chance. It was open and a good play to start the second half. Just couldn't connect. KJ Johnson, three ball, got it. Kaylin Johnson, another three. She has 11. And the lead is 11. Klusmeyer, just a step inside the free throw line. She's got it. And it's 29-20. But the Spartans' serenade from beyond three continues. They were deadly in the first half. They continue it so far in the second half. Anderson, or Robinson gets it from Anderson, gives it right back to Robinson. A lot of perimeter work here for the Spartans. Elbow jumper is no good, but it falls right back to Miller. Miller in the corner, a three. No good that time by Robinson. Boy, that would have been a big one had that gone. Griffith goes right down central and lays it in with the right hand. Jayla Griffith. Now with nine points, and it's 29-22. Brookins guarded by Schultz. Johnson a three, that one off the front rim, no good. Schultz grabs it. Griffith gets around her defender. That's Robinson. And here come the Cupies. Klusmeyer, free throw line jumper, true. And it's 29-24. A little better offense in the second half for the Cupies. Anderson driving, throws up a wild one. That one's tipped out. Klusmeyer has it, gives it up to Griffith. Griffith on the run, wants to hit Stemmons, does. Stemmons lays it in. And a timeout battle. 29-26 in favor of battle. It's been a quick run here. It's been an 8-3 run to start the third quarter in just the first 2.15 for the Cupies and right back in it is Hickman. And you can see Dustin Young, the battle head coach, not happy and wanted a very quick timeout. Not happy that his team's not getting back on defense. A little slow to get back and respond. And the offense has been mainly long shots. There was one layup attempt, but it was a wild shot. Looks like Nautica Washington has checked in. She has. Boo Anderson checks out for battle. Now Hickman showing some pressure. Want to throw it over here to Robinson. They got it to Robinson. Back over to Miller. Washington sets things up. <laughs> Again, battle on the perimeter. Now, good job by Robinson. Johnson in the corner. Tees a three. Got it. Johnson with 14 points. She has two threes here in the third quarter. That's all the battle scoring, but it's 32-26. Griffith to Stemmons. Stemmons gives it up to Klusmeyer. Looking for Rogers maybe on the left-hand side. Instead, they'll go to Griffith. Schultz beyond three. And Hickman circles it around. Trying to find an open shot. Stemmons drives, and her shot goes down. Saray Stemmons with her first points of the night, and it's a four-point game, 32-28. Washington hand off to Johnson. And it looks like the Cupies are going to try to double Johnson as best they can, and there's a foul along the baseline as Taylor Robinson took a hard drive. Addie Schultz going to pick up the foul. That's her first free throw line jumper. Will roll home for Johnson. Kaylin Johnson has 16 points. 16 of the Spartans, 34. And she has all the points here in the third quarter. 
Skip pass to Rodgers. Rodgers wants to go inside to Klusmeyer. Does. Inside to Schultz. Schultz will lay it up and in. Much better offense by the Cupies here in the third quarter. Now can they get stops and can battle. Continue the barrage, especially Kalen Johnson. Here's a three ball put up and in. Taylor Robinson with her third three. And again, battle answers. Griffith on the other end, three a little deep, and that one is tipped, and it'll be out of bounds and go to battle. What a three there by Taylor Robinson. Gives the Spartans a seven-point advantage. 3.40 to go now before the fourth quarter. Miller hands it off to Anderson. There's Miller for three, won't go, rebound falls to Robinson. Robinson has it poked away, Schultz is on the floor. It's gonna be a jump ball, that's gonna stay with battle if I'm not mistaken. It does stay with the Spartans. A long rebound there, corralled originally by battle. So Washington will key it in. She wants to throw it to Robinson and does, gets it back. Now a nice drive by Washington, throws it up off the glass and in, and it's a nine point advantage. Battle has withstood the storm and now pulled away a little bit here in the third. Klusmeyer throws it off of Boo Anderson. Griffith will pick it up under three to go. Here in the third, Stemmons. Rodgers has been quiet tonight. Schultz, and that one's tapped. The passing not so crisp now for Hickman. Griffith, baseline cut off. And that's a foul, and that's gonna be on Washington, and I think that's her third. That is her third. Just the team's first foul here in the second half. Inside Klusmeyer, outside Rogers, three ball good. Hickman needed that. Ella Rogers comes through with her first points and it's back to a six point lead, 39-33 in favor of battle. Lucy Elfrink will check in for the QPs at the next dead ball. Washington, a little short on that one. The ball is tapped around, Stemmons has it. Stemmons around a defender, now picks it up and throws it away. Take it away by Robinson. Robinson a three on two, Miller for three. Rattles out, no good. Rebounded by Stemmons. And Stemmons wants to push. Washington better not foul, she does. That'll be her fourth. Nautica Washington says that my hands went straight up, but she got some body, and Stemmons will go to the line, and that's four fouls on Nautica Washington. Stemmons at the line, free throw good. Here comes Elfrink, and here comes Brookins. Brookins back in for the Spartans wearing number 45. 39-34, Stemmons with another one. That one no good and rebounded by Johnson. So it's a five point game, 145 to go in the third. Brookins out top, gives it up to Miller. Miller thought about a drive there. Robinson will drive, she's cut off by Griffith. Nicely, great pass to Johnson. Brookins is wide open, she can't get it to go. And Griffiths has the carom and it's a foul. That'll be her first. Jalen Green comes in for the first time tonight. She'll give Malia Miller a little rest. 39-34, 1-19 to play. Going inside to Klusmeyer. Klusmeyer back out to Griffith. Stemmons, oh, great pass to Elfrink who lays it in. 
Lucy Elfring scores for the first time. And we're down to a minute to go in the third. It's a three-point game again, a quick 6-0 run. That's a kicked ball. Good idea there by Taylor Robinson. She wanted to get it underneath, but that ball was kicked. So the Spartans will have it, trying to throw it in. They finally do to Johnson. Johnson drives, puts it off the glass and in. She has 18 points and it's back to a five point lead. Griffith with 40 seconds to go in the third. A big possession here. And Klusmeyer travels. We're going to have a substitution. Eastman's back in. Schultz is back in for the Cupies. Ella Rogers will come out, and I believe Klusmeyer came out. Here comes Robinson. Robinson and Boo Anderson will probably hold the ball along with Johnson here with 22 seconds to go in the third. Brookins to Green. Green in the corner to Johnson. Johnson dribbling against Stemmons, and Stemmons got her with the body. That's just the second team foul on, yeah, just the second team foul on Hickman with 12.6 to go. Miller comes in for Green. Battle with the ball, trying to get it in, trying to get it in, trying to get it in to Miller, they do. Now with 10. Miller hands it off to Robinson. Robinson hit the one before half. Robinson got it. Griffith going to have a heave. It's short, no good. A huge bucket at the end of the third quarter. The Spartans lead it 43-36. We're here for the final eight minutes on the KZOU Game of the Week. Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. Attention homeowners, do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? Do you have code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call our special home buying hotline right now. We specialize in buying any home no matter the situation. Turn that problem property into cash today. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. We can buy your home with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there's no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. We're buying a few more homes in your neighborhood right now. So take advantage of this cash offer and call the number on your screen today. Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. Back here at Battle High School, we go to the fourth quarter. It'll be Hickman with the basketball to start the fourth, trailing 43-36. My name is Bo Bayman. Glad you could join us for the C-Mac doubleheader between Battle and Hickman. Hickman wants to go inside to Addie Schultz. They do. Then back to Griffith. A little inside-outside game for the Cupies. Now Griffith and Schultz is underneath, and Schultz is fouled on the shot by Brookins. Looked like a little off-balance shot, but Schultz was bailed out there. The second foul on Brookins, the fourth team foul against Battle. Battle with 43 points, 18 from Kalen Johnson, 11 from Taylor Robinson. Schultz at the free throw line misses the first. She has six points tonight. Let's 
Second free throw is good. Six point game, 43-37. Hickman showing some pressure. Griffith steals it. She looks ahead, wants to give it up, does. Stemmons can't get it to go. And Battle gets the rebound. The pressure worked for Hickman, didn't lead to a bucket, however, still a six point game. 7.20 to go in the game. Johnson, now to Brookins. She gives it up to Anderson. Battle will take its time. You know that, and why not? Anderson drives, left hand scoop shot, no good. Rebound falls to Robinson. And Anderson tees a three, and it's in! Boo Anderson for three, it's a nine point game. Griffith, a little runner, no good. Rebound, tied up, but that'll be Spartan basketball. 46-39 as Nautica Washington comes back in. And also coming back in is Lexi Bryan, the junior forward. Hickman gonna show some pressure again. Washington throws it all the way down to Johnson. Johnson will tee a three. That one's no good. Rebound falls to the floor. Ella Rogers picks it up. And it's going to be a tie ball, I believe. That'll go back to Hickman. A lot of long rebounds are falling to the floor, which you don't see too often. But the Cupies have it. 6.25 to play. Trailing by nine. Inside Klusmeyer, now outside. And she throws it away. Tried to get it to Griffith, didn't work. Cubies will put the pressure on again. Boy, a bucket here by the Spartans will really make this one tough. They scored 45 their last time against St. James to win 45-39. They're sitting at 46 right now. Washington, runner no good. Schultz with the rebound. Griffith ahead to Stemmons. Stemmons pounds the floor, and she's bumped. Nothing called. And now Hickman's going to have to reset. Ella Rogers grabbed that rebound. Kusmeyer inside. Turn around, got it. Big bucket. Big bucket by the Cupies. And then head coach Morgan Scott calls a timeout. I think she wanted to reset the press and her team wasn't ready to press. So 46-39 after the bucket by Klusmeyer. Klusmeyer has 13 points tonight. 13 of the 39. Nine for Griffith and seven for Schultz. Battle's gonna come back out with Brookins, Johnson, Miller, Washington, and Robinson. Washington will throw it in, into the corner to Miller, then to Robinson, nice catch by Robinson. Now she's trapped after she crosses half court. Now give it up to Washington in the corner, Johnson. Johnson does the smart thing and back to back out. 5.20 to play. And now Battle will run some offense. Brookins, and now Washington, offensive foul, wave the basket off. Washington is fouled out. What a big call there. Washington fouls out as Boo Anderson will come back in. Washington fouls out with four points. It was a good take by Washington, but she probably had to go up with it and went into Klusmeyer, and the offensive foul was called. Five minutes to go 
Spartans lead at 46-39, trying to go inside, outside again. Stemmons cut off. Oh, and the Cupies throw it away again. Addy Schultz just throws it away. Another careless turnover by Hickman. Trying to get it in is Miller. She does to Boo Anderson. Anderson goes over the top to Robinson. Miller thought about a three. Boy, that would have been a big shot. Boo Anderson backs it back out. Now holding it is Robinson. Robinson dumps it off to Miller. Battle doing a good job of just playing keep away. Here's Johnson driving. She's fouled and just lays it up. It didn't go. But she'll get a couple of free throws. Four twenty-three to go. And Johnson, who has 18 points, is at the line. The first one's in the air and in the bucket. Second free throw, Johnson got it. Those were two pure free throws. It's 48-39. Hickman needs some points and they need it in a hurry. 4.15 to go, Stemmons picks up her dribble. Schultz in the corner. Back to Stemmons. Stemmons drives right down the lane. She's fouled, can't get the layup to go. But with 4.06, Saray Stemmons will go to the line. Stemmons at the free throw line, the first one in the air, in the bucket. Lucy Elfrink will check back in, Addie Schultz will take a seat. Stemmons will have one more. That one no good, Klusmeyer grabs the carom, and she's, oh no, not a foul, it's a jump ball. And that should be Spartan ball, it is. Klusmeyer did a great job to get the offensive rebound, but then she was tied up, and it's still an eight point advantage. Miller goes in the corner, hands it off to Robinson, and here comes Robinson. Robinson's gonna go the distance and back it out, smart play. Robinson crosses over, will hand off to Boo Anderson. Anderson and Robinson playing some just keep away. And now the Cupies are gonna have to try to trade on defense, they do, and they leave KJ wide open, and Kaylin Johnson nails another three. She has 23 points, and it's an 11 point bulge for the Spartans. Griffith on the other end misses, and Battle has the carom. Battle with 3.15 to go, leads by 11. Johnson has been terrific with 23 points. Anderson, great pass to Brookins, and Brookins lays it in. She beat Elfrink to the pass, and a timeout by Hickman. 53 to 40, with exactly three minutes to go here. What a great pass that time as Brookins laid it in. Brookins her first bucket of the night. But the Spartans have started to pull away 53 to 40 behind 23 points from Kaylin Johnson. So far in the fourth quarter, it's a 10-4 run for the Spartans and Dustin Young. A really good crowd is filed in here. Remember, we have the boys game after. So the boys game afterwards, it'll be Hickman and Battle in that one as well. That one will tip off about 15 minutes after this one. Three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. And Battle leads it 
53 to 40. It was really the key to this game, that 13-0 run to end the first quarter, put Battle out in front. Hickman's got it as close as three since then, but it, they've never been able to get over the mountain and climb the mountain to get back in to where they could take the lead. It'll be Hickman basketball. Griffith will throw it in. Wants to throw it into Klusmeyer, does. Klusmeyer nearly loses it. Griffith, elbow jumper, no good. Brookins has it, loses it. And Ella Rogers will lay it up and in. Nothing hurt there if you're a battle. And that's a blocking foul on Rogers. 53-42, 17 seconds elapsed there. That's Ella Rogers' second foul, just team foul number four against the Cupies. The Cupies are gonna have to foul here and foul a lot. Robinson hands off to Anderson. Battle is just satisfied with running off the clock. And Klusmeyer goes and fouls her and that's the right thing to do because Klusmeyer picks up just her first and just the fifth for the Cupies. Cupies still with a foul to give before they shoot free throws. Throwing it in is Anderson. Anderson gets it to Robinson. Robinson fouled. Ella Rogers will pick up the foul. That'll be her third. And again, that's the foul to give. And so that's 16 fouls against Hickman. The next one will be a one and one. They'll get it into Robinson. Robinson fouled by Elfrink. And so Robinson will go to the line. Team seventh foul, just the first on Elfrink. And so going to the line will be Taylor Robinson. Robinson hit a huge banked in three at the end of the first half. The first free throw up and good. Spartans have been very good from beyond three. They've also been very good at the free throw line tonight. 54-42 battle. Second free throw, no good. Rebound, goes out of bounds, and it'll be Hickman basketball. Good hustle there, especially from the shooter. But it'll be Hickman basketball. The QP's down 12. 2.15 to go. Rogers playing catch. Now Stemmons wants to go inside. Does. It's knocked away. Klusmeyer had it. Now Griffith has it. QP's all out of sorts here. And Morgan Scott saying, We got to go. We got it to go. Under two minutes to play. And there's a foul out top on Boo Anderson. And that will be a one and one. That's what you want if you're Hickman. You want to score when the clock is not running. So a one and one is Jayla Griffith goes to the line. She had seven points in the first half. That's her third here in the second half. She has 10. Cupies can get back to within 10 here but the Spartans have done a great job of really running down the clock here in the fourth quarter. Second one in the air, off, no good. Rebound is off of KJ Johnson and it'll be Hickman basketball. 151 to play. Cupies with one timeout left, Spartans with three. Griffith throws it into Stemmons. Again, the Cupies have to go. Klusmeyer, three ball, short, no good, front of the rim and falls right to Miller, and Miller gets it ahead to Johnson, who holds on to it smartly. Cross-court pass to Robinson. Now Robinson fouled by Elfrink, and that was textbook by the Spartans there. Got the rebound, got it ahead, held it off, and the clock runs. 134 to play here in the fourth. Free throw good by Robinson. And Robinson now has 13 points. Kaylin Johnson with 23. Second free throw, no good. QBs have the rebound. 55-43. Ahead to Stemmons. Stemmons left-handed layup, good. 
So Ray Stemmons trying to come up with a pass, Aaron pass, and Elfrink catches it. Griffith inside to Elfrink. Klusmeyer, three ball, no good. And a rebounded nicely by Brookins, and Brookins with a couple of dribbles and hands it off to Robinson. Great job there by Brookins. Klusmeyer comes and fouls with 58.5 seconds to go. 55-45. What a great job there by Jalea Brookins. Gathered the rebound, couple of dribbles to get out of trouble, passed it to a guard, and got out of trouble. Boo Anderson at the line. Anderson with seven points tonight. The one and one. Oh, that rattles out no good. Klusmeyer has it. Griffith ahead, under a minute to go in the corner. Ella Rogers is going to drive baseline. She's cut off. Back out for Stemmons, a three. Rattles no good. Rogers had it for a minute, and now it's a jump ball. And it'll stay with Hickman. Okay. Hickman with the possession this time, but Hickman with 43.1 seconds to go, down 10. Looks like the Spartans are going to get their 18th victory of the year. Inside, Klusmeyer, back out, Rogers three, good. Hickman had to have that one, 55-48. Looking to throw it in, the Spartans. Timeout, and a timeout wisely by Dustin Young of battle. And he started yelling at his team right after it, saying, hey, we got plenty of time and timeouts. Let's just settle down, 55-48 the score and battled, played well tonight. And it looks like they're gonna move to 18 and six on the year, it would be just the QP's fifth loss. But they're second in the C-Mac as they lost to Rockbridge and then they would lose the battle. And again, I have to tell you that it's uh, the district this district is going to be unbelievable with Battle, Hickman, Rockbridge, a couple of the Kansas City teams like I believe Lee Summit is one that's in that district. It's just going to be dynamite basketball. 55-48, 28 seconds to go. The Spartans in control and with the basketball. My name is Bo Bayman. Glad you could join us here for the game of the week. And it's going to be Johnson who wants to throw it in when we start up. And we're ready to go. Johnson throws it into Robinson. Robinson fouled by Stemmons. Just uh, 1.3 seconds ran off the clock there, but it'll be Robinson at the line. And that's the 10th team foul on Hickman. It'll be the second foul on Stemmons. Stemmons with eight points all in the second half. Robinson a little flat on that free throw. It hits the back spine, no good. She'll get a second. To make it an eight point game. That one rattles out, no good. Griffith gets the rebound. She's got to go with 22 seconds to go. She's going to try to drive all the way. Does, scores. 55-50. That one is hit by Stemmons out of bounds with 15.6 seconds to go. Can Battle finish this one out? Johnson will throw it in. The QBs will look to immediately foul. Brookins goes deep. Miller. Five-second call. Johnson couldn't get it in. They get a timeout. Battle did get a timeout. It's going to be a full timeout. Coach called it. Coach Dustin Young called it right as the official was about to call a five-second call. The referees are talking about it. You can see them above the Hickman huddle there, but I believe it's going to stay battle basketball. Battle leads it with 15.1 to go, 55-50. 
This quarter has been pretty back and forth. 14 points for the Cupies, 12 for the Spartans. Again, each scored 13 in the second. Hickman scored 18 in the third. Battle scored 17. The first quarter, the difference. Hickman ran out to a 5-0 lead, then 13 in a row from Battle, and they led it 13-5 after one. That's the story of this game. So Johnson will key it in for the Spartans again. 15.1 to go. Robinson was open for a minute. She catches it, and a foul by Stemmons. Good job there by Taylor Robinson to come to the basketball and catch it. 14.5 to go as Robinson hits the charity stripe. Robinson missed her last two, but she has 13 points. That one looks better, and it's in. Brookins going to come in for Jalen Green. Green was in there to make sure they got that ball in. Second free throw from Robinson, also good. 57 to 50, and that can pretty much put this one on ice. Griffith hands off to Rogers. Rogers three ball, no good, and it will go out of bounds, and it'll go to Battle. With 5.7 to go, the Battle Spartans are gonna win this game <laughs> in an impressive fashion. It's 57 to 50. They'll have to get it in maybe one more time as they try to go deep to Green. Green touches it, so the clock should start. She caught it, and now the clock will run out. And the Battle Spartans win it 57 to 50. Battle runs this record to 18 and 6. Meanwhile, the Cupies fall to 19 and 5. A well-played game by both teams, but the first quarter, the big difference here as Battle beats Hickman, 57 to 50, a huge CMAC win for the Spartans. Dustin Young and his club have to be really happy with that effort against the Cupies, especially on a day where there was no school. They came out to play. They were ready to play in the first quarter. That's just game one of two here at battle as the boys will now play here in about 15 minutes. But again, our final score, 57-50. Leading the way, Kaitlin Johnson with 23 points and chipping in with 15 was Taylor Robinson. And Robinson hit a big three-pointer right at the end of the first. Kaylin Johnson becomes the all-time leading scorer in battle history tonight with her effort of 23 points. They just announced it. It was actually Coach Young who announced it. Congratulations to her. That was fantastic. But a huge win again by the Lady Spartans. They moved to 18 and 6 overall. And the Cupies. Fall to 19 and 5. All right, we'll take a break. We'll talk more about this one when we come back. Again, our final score 57 to 50, battle over Hickman in the girls' game. You're watching the game of the week right here on KZOU. There's no one else. Um, I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe. Ooh. No, no. Nowhere. Stick to one woman. Ouch. There's no doubt. There's only one Judge Judy. Never lie to a judge when you're in court. It's a no-no. Judge Judy. Whoa. I'm getting you to smile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> judge Judy, weekdays at 4 on ABC 17 KMIZ. If you see a teen or adult suddenly collapse, the first thing you do is... Call 911. And the second thing you do is... Push hard and fast in the center of the chest at a rate of at least 100 beats per minute. Who even knows what 100 beats per minute sounds like? Well, you can't tell by the way I use my vocal performance and your time to talk. Music's not when I'm falling, kick the grass inside the fall. Come on.
Come join the Jefferson City Chamber Network. YP, Jefferson City's Young Professionals Group, provides leadership opportunities, professional development, community involvement, networking, and social activities. Young professionals meet the first Thursday of every month. For more information on YP, please contact Susan at the Jefferson City Chamber of Commerce. Build your business. Join the Chamber Network. Brought to you by the Networks of Mid-Missouri. You don't have to wear a uniform for service or sacrifice. Every day, ordinary Americans perform extraordinary acts of courage and selfless service. Please join us in recognizing citizen heroes who have made a difference in the lives of others through their acts of courage and selfless service in communities across America. Nominate a citizen hero today at themedalofhonor.com. Back here at Battle High School, we're in between our games here. The girls game has just finished with Battle beating Hickman 57 to 50 behind 23 points from Kaylin Johnson who became the all-time leading scorer at Battle High School. Congratulations to KJ as the boys get ready to start here. As they will come on the floor, this is a big C-Mac game for the boys as well. But going back to the girls game, Dustin Young's club of battle did an excellent job of controlling things after the initial onslaught from Hickman. There was a lot of first quarter jitters it seemed like, but it did not matter because a 13-0 run to end the first quarter, the difference in this one, that was a big eight points. They end up winning by seven. As I mentioned, Kalen Johnson had 23 points. Taylor Robinson had 15 to chip in for the Spartans, who moved to 18 and six overall. Hickman falls to 19 and five. And after a win over Cardinal Ritter, 45-31, the QPs dropped this game against the Spartans. And as we mentioned, there's not much, not many games left really in the season as we are getting really close to district time. As I'm pulling up the girls district and the teams, it's, it, it's amazing this district, how it's gonna be so, so good between Hickman, Rockbridge, Battle, So the girls basketball team loses tonight. To fall to 19 and five. Okay, so Hickman plays battle tonight. They'll play at Jefferson City on the 23rd. And then the class six district seven tournament starts on March 2nd. So there you have it. Class six district seven starts on March 2nd. It goes the second through the seventh. And that's gonna be quite the test. As the Cupies fall to 19 and five on the season. As for battle, they have really turned things around under Dustin Young. They are now 18 and six. And aside from a loss to Helias, which was a good game, They've won four of their last five. They beat California in overtime, won at Smith Cotton, lost at Helias, then won at St. James before winning tonight. They'll play Hannibal. That will be on the 22nd, and that will be their final game before Class 6 District 7 tournament game coming up. The Class 6 District 7 as we take a look at the in-season sports and what's who's in that district for you. Class six, district seven, I think I'm in boys. I need to get the girls basketball here. But it's gonna be amazing. We'll find out who's uh, ranked where and who has each 
seeding because that's going to be a big, big deal. The seeding. Class 6, District 7. They have not done the seeding yet. I didn't think maybe they had. They haven't because there are still games like the ones tonight to play. And so they have not done the seedings yet. That seedings meeting has got to be coming up probably in the next couple of days, to be honest with you, with only one game left in the regular season for each Hickman and battle. These teams will be ready to roll. Class 6, District 7 has these teams. Battle, Blue Springs, Blue Springs South, Fort Osage, Grain Valley, Hickman, Rockbridge, and Smith Cotton. Now I will say this, for the girls, the host site is Hickman High School. So the Hickman girls will be playing at home once they get the seedings going on. That'll be interesting to see, but Hickman loses tonight 57-50 to battle. You have to figure that probably Rockbridge is number one, battle number two. Grain Valley has got a great team this year. And Hickman, Hickman could fall to number four. Grain Valley so far 20 and four on the year. With a, they lost to Rockbridge 51-46. I don't believe Hickman or Battle has played Grain Valley. No, they haven't. So it'll be interesting. The seeding coming up for Class 6, District 7. Again, Battle, Blue Springs, Blue Springs South, Fort Osage, Grain Valley, Hickman, Rockbridge, and Smith Cotton. Blue Springs is 12 and 10 on the year. Blue Springs South High School also in that district, 12 and 13. Fort Osage High School is 10 and 11. We know that Smith Cotton has had its troubles this year as well. So, I mean, you're looking at Grain, <laughs> Grain Valley Battle, Hickman and Rockbridge. That's going to be a whale of a district. And again, the host will be Hickman High School. March 2nd is when that starts, which is not too far away. March 2nd, the first round games will come up on th a Thursday night, so less than two weeks now. Battle will play next Wednesday. Hickman will play next Thursday on the girls' side. All right, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll get you set for the boys' game. Shea Maloney will join me on the broadcast, but we'll take a break right here on KZOU. You're watching the Game of the Week. <laughs> Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. 1851 Underground Tap and Grill offers historical architecture, great food, and an unforgettable experience. It's a great place for specialty burgers, and be sure to try the fire and ice chicken. We love to bring our clients for half price appetizers. Great food, great location, great service. What more could you want? Come see for yourself. Why we say. We're good friends. Great food. And excellent service. Come, come together. It's me, Artie. Come see what I collected from the Creative Galaxy in my idea box. Transform your world. Will you help me make art? Each one of our journeys keeps us Before you throw it away. Hey, I have an idea. Think. Outside. The box. We'll never get older. Each one. Oh, be amazing. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Making just one connection during recovery from mental and substance use disorders can put the strength of family and community behind you. We're all connected, offering encouragement, support, and hope. Join the Voices for Recovery. Strengthen families and communities. For confidential information on mental and substance use disorders, including prevention and treatment referrals for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HEALTH. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 
Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Bo Bayman. Glad you could join us on the high school game of the week. We are here in between games. The girls' game finishes 57-50. Battle over Hickman. Now the boys on deck warming up as they get set for things here tonight. Want to thank... Our producer engineer, John Hook, Cooper Bryant, our director, Noah Ellitson, Matt Riley, Asher Marshman on cameras tonight. And of course, thank you to Curtis Varnes and CPS for putting this together to where we can bring you high school basketball throughout the season. We are between games with about, oh, five minutes to go before this one. And coming into this game, battle is red hot. 11 game winning streak, 17 and six overall. Meanwhile, Hickman is kind of on the other end of the spark spectrum. They lost big time on Tuesday to Rockbridge. That was at home. They lost 60 to 42. Cray Logan's group really they got blitzed by Brady Bowers in the three-point ball and could never come back into it in a game that we showed you right here on KZOU. But again, Hickman and Battle in the same district, in that Class 6, District 7. Hickman will host the boys as well. So that that's coming up in a little less than two weeks now. So these teams want to perform well here tonight. We'll be watching Tate McCubbin for the Spartans, also Justin Goolsby, and of course the forward Ethan Wiley. He wears number 32. He's always a presence down low. As far as the Hickman Cupies go, they're kind of going with the young lineup tonight. They only have a couple of, uh, of seniors. Rodney McNeil, a junior, is going to start along with James Townsend, Langston Stroop, Brock Camp, the sophomore, and Rasan Nichols, another sophomore. A couple of sophomores starting. Of course, Camp, the 6'6", 235 post player for the QPs. He will wear number 24. He was a tight end for them on the football field, but right now he's all set to go in basketball season. Cupies, as I mentioned, coached by Cray Logan. The Spartans will come with Vernell Holt Jr., Tate McCubbin, Tay Patrick, Justin Goolsby, and Ethan Wiley. The Spartans coached by Ben Pilardi with a record of 17 and six. At one time, this team was six and six. Now they've won 11 in a row to make it 17 and six. With about 2.50 to go before they start announcing, let's take our final break, and we'll get back and be ready for this one. You're watching the Game of the Week right here on KZOU. Looking to start fresh with a new career? With JobPoint's variety of trades programs, you can reach your employment goals in just eight weeks. Prepare for work in the booming healthcare industry with our Certified Nursing Assistant course, or refine your computer skills in our Office Technology and Support class. Other courses include Highway and Heavy Construction, Carpentry, and Heating, Ventilation, and Air Conditioning. Visit JobPoint.org or call 573-474-8560. JobPoint, focused on employment. I don't believe the future has to wait for the future. I destroy brain tumors with nanoparticles. 
I see breast cancer others can't. I create a biotech revolution with smart cancer drugs. I speed life-saving discoveries to life. I am the miracle of science with soul, and I live in City of Hope. Being empowered starts with getting informed, looking closer. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. But many of us don't know there are different types of breast cancer with different characteristics. That was me. Learning about the specifics of my diagnosis gave me the confidence to make informed treatment decisions with my doctor. This meant everything to me and my family. So take another look. Ask another question. Learn more at notonetype.org. And welcome back to Battle High School, everybody. It's boys time as the Spartans of Battle will host their crosstown rivals, the Hickman Cupies, right here on KZOU. Alongside Shea Maloney, my name is Bo Bayman. Glad you could join us as we get set for basketball game number two. There's a lot of hype around this game, Shea. Look at Kobe Brown of the Missouri Tigers here. We've seen a couple of Tigers as they get set for Texas A&M tomorrow. But uh, this should be a pretty good one to get between two really good teams. Yeah, it's um, maybe at the beginning of the season, battle struggling out of the gates. Hickman off to a hot start. You circle this game and you're thinking Hickman's going to solidify their CMAC championship, but battle's gone on that 11-game winning streak, and they, they're kind of the favorites here tonight, I'd say. I would agree with you there on that 11-game streak, and we'll see how Hickman responds after that 18-point home loss to Rockbridge where the Bruins really took it to them on Tuesday. Yeah, the rivalry loss has always hurt, and, I mean, they've lost two out of their three, two big, two big mid-mo rivals, both handedly. So let's see how they bounce back here tonight. Yeah, it'll be interesting. The Spartans will start Vernell Holt, Tate McCubbin, Tay Patrick, Justin Goolsby, and Ethan Wiley. Meanwhile, <laughs> Hickman has been announced. It'll be Rodney McNeil, James Townsend, Langston Stroop, Brock Camp, and Rasan Nichols. The Cupies will want to run. Battle will run as well. They are not afraid. Neither one of these teams afraid to get up and down. If you're just joining us in the girls game, it was 57-50 in favor of Battle. Steve Lampson with the starting lineup for the Spartans. Rennell Holt. McCubbin, a sharpshooter from the outside, wears number three. Tay Patrick does a lot of the dirty work. And Justin Goolsby, really good on the football field. And he's good on the basketball court as well. And we told you about Ethan Wiley in the pregame. The big man, he's a low down low. We got a couple of premier big men in this game when you talk about Wiley and you talk about Brock Camp. But we are all set to go. Eight minutes on the clock for the first quarter. As the Spartans of battle will be in the white with the blue numerals. Hickman in the road black. Their numerals are also black, outlined in gold. And we are ready to go here at Battle High School. Hope you enjoy it right here on KZOU. Ball is tipped and it's taken by the Spartans. And it's Patrick who controls it. Guarded by Stroop. Patrick backs it out. He's gonna hand off to McCubbin. McCubbin puts it on the ground. Under, underneath the Wiley, great pass and he'll lay it up and in. Cupies come right back. Stroop wants to go inside the camp. Instead, he moves to the left side. Stroop again cut off. Camp for three. That one off the back iron, no good. Rebounded by the Cupies. But it comes down to the Spartans. Goolsby and one! Justin Goolsby with a power move. I think that foul's going to be on Nichols. Well, Hickman had, Hickman had trouble guarding both the big man and the shooters against Rockbridge, and early on here, 
Ethan Wiley's already got a couple points, and Justin Goolsby's got a layup too. So we'll see if they start prioritizing the down low defense. Free throw no good. Camp gathers the carom quickly into the game as Josiah Griffith. He came in for McNeil. Now it's Stroop. Hands it off to Camp. Camp way out top. Now underneath. Layup is good over the head by Griffith, who just checked in. Josiah Griffith with a great back cut, and it's 4-2. Here's Patrick. Woo, a nifty move there. Wide open is Holt. Three ball from the corner is good. And the Spartans are up five quickly. 7-2 in favor of battle. Camp goes against Wiley. Lays it up, a little short. And McCubbin will grab it. He gets it ahead. Patrick goes around his man. Rolls off, no good. Wiley and Stroop go for the basketball. It's a held ball. And it'll go with Hickman. Quickly into the game, Sean Keyes and Logan Cray doing a lot of substituting early. Yeah, he is. Um, point guard Ike Bonapar, he uh, is usually handing the ball, carrying, carrying duties here for the Cubes, but he's already out of the game, and we've already seen Langston Stroop and Rashawn Nichols run the four journal. So, interesting to see there. Here's Griffith. He stops, picks it up, hands it off to Keyes. Now Stroop. Trying to go around McCubbin. McCubbin with a good job of playing defense. And that's going to be a foul on McCubbin. McCubbin with a push on the baseline drive. He didn't like the call, but it'll be his first, team's first. 7-2 Spartans early on. Cutting to the basket off the glass, no good. That was Nichols missing that one. That one's pushed from behind. And Nichols is going to pick up a foul. Back and forth we go. Second team foul against Hickman. And I think that's the second. It is the second on Nichols. And yeah, they're going to leave him in, though. Wiley's got it way out top. Looking to give it up. Does to Patrick. Patrick threw a double team. Holt drives, kicks, McCubbin, corner three, rattles no good. And it falls to Townsend. Townsend ahead to Stroop. Stroop gonna lay it too strong off the glass, no good. The Cupies have missed a couple of easy layups. That one goes off of Patrick and out of bounds. It's a turnover. Already seen a lot of similarities with the Hickman struggles against Rockbridge. They're not getting easy layups to fall. And on the defensive side, they're leaving shooters open, trying to guard Ethan Wiley down low. Is that Bonaparte with the basketball? Yes. Yeah, he's wearing number three tonight, which is not in the program. They said Rodney McNeil, but that is Bonaparte. Good catch on your part. Bonaparte throws it away. Putnam will check in for the Spartans. Jack Putnam, the sophomore. Both teams doing a lot of substituting early as they're gonna run up and down. Townsend on Holt. Now a show and go, a little double team. McCubbin to Wiley, Wiley into the lane. Off the glass and good. Ethan Wiley with four points. And the Spartans lead by seven. Bonaparte loses it for a second. Townsend has it. Three ball, a little strong. McCubbin grabs the rebound. Here comes Patrick in and battle. Again, they try to double team. And a Wiley's left open underneath. Misses one time, misses two times, but a foul. Hickman's went with a small lineup here, which is interesting cause. Battles countered with three forwards of their own. And Ethan Wiley, that was too easy for him down low, even though he couldn't get the and one shot to fall. Wiley's going to go to the line where he's 0 for 1 tonight. 
But with 4.10 to go in the first, the Spartans up seven. And it could be more here if Wiley can connect. Misses. Brock Camp comes back in. And in for the Spartans, Xander Stevens. Wiley takes his time. Ethan Wiley, second free throw good. 10-2 Spartans. And Gouldsby will check back in and Wiley will get a break. Camp gives it up to Bonaparte. Bonaparte out there with Townsend. Also Keys and Griffith. Keys wants to go to camp, and camp is fouled by Goolsby underneath. And that's going to be what Hickman has to do, Shea. they got to feed camp down low and get those bigger players in foul trouble. Yeah, they do. In the losing effort against Rockbridge, he was the game-leading scorer. He, he had a good game despite Hickman's loss. And Sean Keys is in the game, too. He's seeing more minutes than him. he's gotten all year, and I think that's because... Coach Logan's realizing that battles got high and they need to do something about it. Turnover after a miss, and that one is put in by Bonaparte. Bonaparte with his first two, it's 10-4. That was a long miss by Townsend. Patrick had the rebound for a second, lost it, and the QPs made him pay. There's a drive inside, won't go from Holt, and the QPs have the rebound. Bonaparte has it. Little crossover behind the back, into the lane, shot up, won't go, and it goes out of bounds off of Goolsby. It'll stay with the QPs. Keon Cross checks in, and both benches, as we said, really using the bench. Coach is going with the substitutions. Camp holds it high, hands it off to Townsend for three, and he's got it. It's five quick ones for the Cubes, and they're back within three. It's a good sign for Hickman. Jimmy Townsend is far and away their best shooter, so to see him knock down an early one is, Coach Logan's gotta love that. Probably good for him to see it in. And Putnam is blocked at the rim. Here comes Bonaparte, backs it out. That one poked away by Stevens. Wholesale changes now for the Cupies. Nichols, Jordan Richardson, and Stroop come back in. Back and forth we go. Still 2.46 to go in the opening quarter as Bonaparte takes it. 10-7 Spartans. Bonaparte says, Move out of the corner, let's go to work with our big guy Brock Camp. He looks for a cutter, doesn't find it. Will he go to work? Nope, cross court pass. Nichols, back to Camp, off his head. He can't get the first one to go. Second one is blocked. Blocked from behind by Goolsby. And there's a foul, and that foul, I think that's gonna go on Rasan Nichols. Nope, it's not. It's going to go on Richardson. I was about to say, if that's Nichols, that's his third here in the first. Yeah, I'd say Nichols got lucky there, and <laughs> I think Coach Logan agrees as he subs him out rather soon. Wiley's back in for the Spartans. 10-7 battle. Holt cuts to the left side, now picks up his dribble. McCubbin back in. He wants to go inside to Wiley, does. Wiley going to work, tries to split two men. And there's a foul on the inside. Wiley got the best of Camp there, but I think that's what Camp needs to do the whole game. He needs to just stay on Wiley, make life hard for him. Because we saw earlier in this game, Wiley getting whatever he wanted with the Hickman guards trying to guard him. And that foul actually called on Jordan Richardson. That'll be his second. Wiley's free throw is in the air and in the bucket. Wiley now has six of the 11 Spartan points. Wiley with a big deep breath. The second one is good as well. So after a couple of misses to start, now all of a sudden Wiley's starting to connect. 
Short jumper, no good. Ball's on the floor. Brock Camp has it poked away by McCubbin. And here comes Holt. Holt throws it up. McCubbin lays it in. Great fast break by the Spartans, and they have doubled Hickman now 14-7. This battle defense has been really relentless so far in this game. Camp on a little pick and roll. Can't get it to go. Boy, it's been tough luck for Brock Camp down low. He's missed a bunch of shots early. Holt off the window and in. And Craig Logan wants a timeout, and I don't blame him. They're not stopping the basketball on defense. And just like that, it's a 6-0 run from battle, and they lead it by nine. Sixteen seven in favor of Battle. Wiley with seven. Holt with five. That's twelve of the sixteen points. The Cupies have three from Townsend. They have two from Josiah Griffith and two from Bonaparte. And that's it. Brock Camp yet to score with 124 to go here in the first quarter. Like you said in the beginning, both teams have really pushed the tempo on the fast breaks. But Battle's the only one capitalizing as Hickman's had a number of missed layups. No question, especially the last couple trips. They'll try to set things up. Griffith gives it up. They want to see, I think they want to give Brock Camp a chance to see one go in. Bonaparte drives, lays it off to Camp. It goes right back to Bonaparte and he's fouled. And I think that's going to be on McCubbin. If it is, it's his second. Yep, they'll call it on Tate McCubbin. He's got two fouls who probably have to come out and he's a big weapon for the Spartans. And going to the line will be Isaiah Bonaparte. Bonaparte puts it in, and McCubbin indeed comes out with those two fouls with 103 to go here in the first. Cupies will like to have these points go on the board without the clock moving. Bonaparte, a second one, and it's good. 16-9 now in favor of battle. The Cupies showing some pressure. Goolsby gives it up. And now Patrick will bring it across. Wiley going to work against Camp. Camp cut him off nicely. Patrick for three, that one too strong. Rebound over the top by Stevens. And Stevens puts it in. Stevens comes in from a coven after that last foul and he hasn't scored a whole lot for the Spartans this year but he is key to them on the defensive side of the ball. And it's even better when you can get some points for him. Yeah, no question. That was just all Will. He went up and got it. Got the rebound, put it back up and in. Then on the other end, Brock Camp, who's going to check out here, hasn't scored yet. And he's going to go to the bench after a traveling violation. 30 seconds to go here in the first. 18-9 Spartans. I would think battle targets Ethan Wiley down with Camp out of the game. I would think you're right. Patrick, look to him, there he is. Wiley, up and under and in. 12 seconds to go. Bonaparte has it, 20 to nine in favor of the Spartans. Bonaparte dribbles it off somebody's foot. He's got, and a foul, a foul by Patrick. Not exactly what you want there with .9. It's only the fourth team foul. But Stroop will throw it in, but it's going to have to be quick with 0 0.9. They throw it up to Camp. Camp, well, he touched it, but no time went off the clock. I think the referees are going to talk about this, Shea, saying that ball was touched, then went out of bounds. Yeah, this really, if they don't take any time off the clock, which looks like they I think they're going to call the corner. Yep, they will. That'll be the end of the first quarter. It's a good, good 
quarter for the Spartans. They put up 20 and lead it by 11. 20 to nine battle. You're watching the high school game of the week right here on KZOU. Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. Winter weather is here. Don't miss a single school closing or delay with ABC 17 News and Storm Track Weather. Snow continues to fall all across mid Missouri. We're tracking the latest severe winter weather to immediately alert you to any closings that could impact your family's day. That's why we have that weather alert day in place for tomorrow. On air, online, and on the go, keeping you ahead of the storm. ABC 17 News and Storm Track Weather. Closings and delays sponsored by Kimna Collision Repair. Let someone you trust do the job right. News from Fulton. At Callaway Collision Center, we do more than just auto body work. And when we do auto body work, we do it right and we treat you right. Body work, alignments, mechanical repairs, we do it all. Callaway Collision Center, honest, dependable, and one of the best in the business. We are Callaway Collision Center, and we want to be your auto body specialist. Give us a call. Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. We're back here at Battle High School, the second quarter underway, and Vernell Holt has laid one in, and then a block on the other end, and Langston Stroop has picked up his second foul. It's 22 to nine in favor of the Spartans. Stroop right there, number 11 for the Cupies, has two fouls. Wiley wants to go down low, instead gives it up. Holtz drives, can't get it to go. Now Griffith on the run, will he stop? He will, lets a man pass, three ball good. Josiah Griffith with a three, he has five, and the QP's back to within 10. That's where he makes his living, is on the three point line. Speaking of three, Goolsby for three short. Camp has it, hands it off to Bonaparte. I should say, that's yeah, that's Bonaparte, number three. There's Townsend, Bonaparte goes into Camp. Camp goes to work, he's bumped, but he'll get it to go, his first bucket. And the QPs have five straight, it's 22-14. And as you mentioned, Shay, that's what Camp's gonna have to do. He's gotta go after Wiley to try to get him out of there with some foul trouble. That'll be a fun matchup all night long. Yeah. Wiley gonna go after Camp on this end, and instead he loses it. Stroop, kind of a one on two, he will go in. Oh, a pretty runner with the right hand. Langston Stroop scores it. He's got a bucket and it's 22-16. Wiley with a nice move to get past Camp but dribbled it off his knee. Here's Holt, gives it up to Goolsby. Goolsby so strong and that one won't go. Camp grabs the rebound. And Camp wants to go the distance. He does and he's fouled. And he goes right at Wiley. Wiley doesn't like the call, but he'll pick up his first. And a timeout, it's a 30 second timeout for battle as the Cupies, once down 22 to nine, have scored seven straight. And Brock Camp will go to the line, mainly by causing turnovers, Shea, and pushing the basketball. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a role reversal here. We got Battle in the first quarter, getting the turnovers and getting their layups to fall while Hickman was missing from point blank range. And now Battle's missed a few layups in a row, turned the ball over, and Hickman's capitalizing. So Hickman back within six, as we saw in the girls' game. 
Battle built a big first quarter lead and then it was tough for Hickman to climb that mountain back. They're trying to do it in the boys game. As some of the Mizzou Tigers look on. And we'll get back to action here with Brock Camp at the free throw line. Camp just made his first bucket of the night. Now he'll go to the charity stripe for the first time. Both Camp and Langston Stroop for Hickman were held scoreless in that first quarter, and those are arguably Hickman's two best players. So the fact that they both got on the scoreboard in the past minute or so is a good sign for the QPs. Camp's first one is off the iron, off the backboard, no good. 5.32 to go before half. Second one will rattle out. Camp goes 0 for 2 with a chance to get within four. Patrick picks up his dribble, has to give it back out. He does to Holt. Holt says, let's calm down. McCubbin back in with his two fouls. Here's Patrick, guarded by Townsend. Holt thought about a three. Griffith's going to make him use the left hand. He does. Wiley, way out top, goes at camp. And now the Spartans reset. Wiley wants to go underneath. It's picked off by Bonaparte. Bonaparte. Off his right foot, scores it. And the foul on Tay Patrick. Bonaparte makes it a four point game. He'll have a chance for a three point play. Now you got both McCubbin and Patrick both with two fouls. They're gonna sub Patrick out. Wiley takes a breather as well. As Keon Cross is back in and Goolsby back in. Bonaparte. Free throw good, an old fashioned three point play and it's a three point game. Jack Putnam also back into the game for battle. Goolsby, top of the key, gives it to McCubbin. McCubbin drops it for a second there, but no harm done. Again, Wiley out of the game, that one's tipped. Stroop has it and Stroop is fouled by Putnam. And that is going to be team foul number seven. And so that means Stroop goes to the line. Uncharacteristic bad pass turnover for Holt there. And I don't know what flipped in Hickman, but all of a sudden they're way more aggressive. That one rolls home. Stroop has it. He's got three points now. As Shea mentioned, all here in the second quarter. He can put Hickman within one, and he does. And a substitution as Jordan Richardson will come back in. Richardson comes back in, Josiah Griffith goes to the bench. And now Hickman's gonna back up into a, looks like a one, two, two. Yeah, one, two, two defense here. Especially without Wiley in there. They're going to make him pass. McCubbin passes Goulds B. Turn around. Rolls out. Camp with the rebound. Gets it to Bonaparte ahead to Richardson. Back out Townsend. Three for the lead. No good. Camp's got the rebound. His putback is in. And Hickman leads it 23-22. It is a 14-0 Hickman run. Battle has not scored since that early layup by Holt. Putnam catches underneath. That one won't go. Bonaparte has the rebound. Here comes Hickman again. Backing out is Bonaparte. And they want to go inside the camp. Townsend three ball. That one's off. Camp is there though. Grabs the rebound and he's fouled by Putnam. It would not surprise me if Ethan Wiley gets back into this yep. game. 
In fact, he's at the table to come in. Camp with four points. We'll go to the free throw line where he's 0 for 2. That one's short. Camp is 0 for 3. Putnam with his two fouls comes out and here comes Wiley back in. Patrick's back in. Xander Stevens, McCubbin in, and Goolsby. It's Townsend, Stroop, Camp, Richardson, and Bonaparte for the Cupies. Brock Camp's second one is good, his first free throw of the night, and the Cupies lead it by two, 24, 22, and it's a 15-0 run by the Cupes. Good job by Patrick into Goolsby. Goolsby wants to go off the glass, tries, no good. Camp has the rebound, wants to go ahead, and it goes off of Richardson and out of bounds. That was a great job by Jimmy Townsend for Hickman guarding up on Goolsby. He was he's clearly outsized, but he made that shot very difficult for Goolsby. Patrick will bring it up. Patrick hasn't scored, has those two fouls. McCubbin has scored. Oh, what a drive there. Cut off on the baseline. Wiley to McCubbin. McCubbin lays it in. Beautiful execution by the Spartans to tie this game. 2.30 to go here in the first half. We're not at 24. Camp spin move in the lane. Leaves it short. Wiley is there to grab it. Referees letting them play there. Now a three from Patrick for the lead. No good. And a rebound by Bonaparte. Back and forth we go. Bonaparte being guarded by Xander Stevens. Battle fans love it. Under two to play in the first. A screen from Camp in the corner, Townsend. Oh, a great cut by Bonaparte. Won't go. The ball's on the floor. Goolsby had it. Now Stroop had it. Now Patrick has it, and it's out of bounds. <laughs> Both teams playing really hard. 1.44 to go. I don't think it's any coincidence that Battle snapped their <laughs> scoring streak when Wiley came back in the game. Yes, absolutely. And a great backdoor cut by McCubbin. And now Wiley's making life difficult for the QPs in the paint on the defensive side as well. Bonaparte puts up a two-point shot, grabbed by McCubbin on the rebound. And here come the Spartans. Wiley is the trailer. He's there. Can't catch the pass. Not the first time. Gets it the second time. And a pass underneath to Goolsby, and Goolsby will lay it up and in. And the Spartans have the lead. Wiley making a difference. Had nine points in the first quarter, and now he's got a couple of sweet assists in the second quarter. Wiley with one foul. Camp goes in the corner to Townsend. Townsend tees a three that rattles around, hits the backboard, and goes in. And the Cupies have the lead with under a minute to go, 27 to 26. Let's see if Battle plays for the last shot. Nearly turned over, Richardson has it. Richardson against McCubbin. McCubbin, no foul called, but Richardson will lay it in. And it's 29-26. Patrick nearly lost it. McCubbin for three, no good. Goolsby's there to put it home. The put back puts the Spartans to within one. No one boxed out Goolsby and that was an easy rebound and put back. Seven seconds, that's Bonaparte throwing up a long three. Now a two and one. Patrick from half court launches and it's off the glass, no good and we're at halftime. A huge, Second quarter for the Hickman Cupies propel Hickman to a one point lead, 29 28. Hickman outscoring the Spartans in the second quarter, 20 to 8. And really, as you mentioned, Shay, until the final, let's say, minute and a half, that's when finally the Spartans found some offense. Yeah, it's, um, you wouldn't, it's, it's a relatively high scoring game. 
despite the good defense we've seen, and I think that's because after all these turnovers, both teams have pushed the tempo, fast-paced, and they're getting easy layups here at the end. So Battle outscored Hickman 20-9 in the first. Hickman outscores Battle 20-8 in the second, and that's where we stand, 29-28 Hickman at halftime. And if you missed it in the girls' game, it was Battle 57, Hickman 50 in our first matchup here on KZOU. We'll take a break. We'll talk about that more, a little more about the first half. You're watching the game of the week right here on KZOU. Looking for a great deal on tires? Popeye's Tires and Garage in Columbia, where you can get the best prices in town on tires. Whether you want a used tire with lots of miles left on them or new tires at unbeatable price, we have them. My dad also offers the best price on oil changes and other repairs to keep you safe on the road. Popeye's Tires and Garage, just off Paris Road in Columbia. Come, Come see us. us for a great deal on tires and repairs. Before the first raindrop falls, ABC 17 Storm Track weather alerts you to severe weather threats. So we're looking at maybe a couple more storms popping up, primarily south of I-70. Using future track to keep you ahead of the storm. Throughout the afternoon, this is still where we can see that severe threat. Pinpointing the exact time and place it will arrive. Waynesville by 606. We're looking at about 1 p.m. for Audrain County. Always tracking, always alerting. Giving you advance warning to keep your family safe. We are ABC 17 Storm Track weather. We have a lot to get to tonight. We have some more breaking news tonight. Some huge news. This is aerial footage here. We'll continue working to get new details on this, keeping a close eye on storms tonight. Chief Meteorologist Jessica Hacker. I'm going to continue tracking this rain as it pushes north. This is the aftermath. This is a story you can count on ABC 17 News to follow. We came to South Dakota to get the story. Live in Columbia, Phelps County, live in Ashland from the state capitol. This is ABC 17 News at 10. Welcome back to Battle High School. We're at the half of the boys game between Hickman and Battle, and it's Hickman 29, Battle 28 in what was a marvelous first half. Alongside Shane Maloney, I'm Bo Bayman. Glad you could join us here on KZOU. Want to thank our team again. We want to thank, of course, our producer engineer, John Hook. We want to thank Thank Cooper Bryant, our director, who's punching all the buttons. Noah Ellitson, Matt Riley, Asher Marshman on the cameras as well. And Shay, a pretty interesting first half. Yeah. Um, Fast-paced, high tempo. Both teams wanted to go out and run. Been some made layups, been some missed layups, been some blocks. Been, we've got everything, really. One of these teams, to me, is going to make a run, and that's going to be the difference in this game. Could be in the third quarter, could be in the fourth quarter. But one's going to go on an 8-0 run, and that could be the difference. Yeah, we've already seen two big runs, and one for each team. That's why we have such a post game here. Uh, nice job by Hickman bouncing back after a rough first quarter. And nice job by Battle to, uh, they, they, they limited the damage there at the end, because that could have been a lot worse. They put Wiley back in. He made a couple great passes to get the scoring started for the Spartans, and now we've got a close game. No, not to embarrass you, but I did the girls' game by myself. No cheerleaders came up here. <laughs> then you joined me, and all of a sudden the cheerleaders come up here. What's up with that? <laughs> I might know one or two of them. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's 29-28 in favor of the Hickman Cupies. Leading the way for the Cupies is Isaiah Bonaparte. He's got seven. Chipping in with six is James, Town James Townsend. For the Spartans, it's really been Ethan Wiley. Wiley's been good. He's got nine points, but he also has a couple of assists. He's only got one foul, but he's been a big difference. When they take him out, the Spartans are a different team. Well, I think when they take Wiley out, Camp has, Camp has confidence to do whatever he wants down yep. low. And on the flip side, Wiley has confidence every time they take Camp out. So now we're going to take a look at Kobe Brown. From the Mizzou team, there's Dennis Gates over there, the head coach of the Missouri Tigers. He's on hand, saying hi to the folks. Let's take a break. We're at the half. It's Hickman 29, Battle 28. You're watching the game of the week right here on KZOU. 
Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. I'm here at Algier Salvage in Millersburg with George Algier. George, what services do you offer here? Well, we buy scrap cars, we buy aluminum, copper, white goods, uh, any kind of heavy iron, pretty much anything to do with recycling in the way of metals. We handle all of that. Bring your cars to us, or we can go and we can bid on them and come and get them, and we always haul them free. From Algier Salvage in Millersburg. Come see us. Don't miss a moment of breaking news. Download the ABC 17 News app for instant alerts and live video. A man has barricaded himself inside at home. With updates on the scene. The building has uh, been cleared. We brought in the Mid-Missouri Bomb Squad. Just turn on notifications in your phone settings so you never miss breaking news alerts. Live coverage just one tap away. ABC 17 News. Get the app. Get the alert. Talk to State Farm Agent Phyllis Nichols in Columbia today. Welcome back, everybody. We're at halftime here at Battle High School, the boys' game here tonight. The girls have battled. The Lady Spartans beat Hickman 57-50 here at halftime of the boys' game. It's Hickman with a one-point advantage, 29 to 28. You're looking at Dennis Gates, the head coach of the Missouri Tigers, taking this one in with a couple of his players before they get set for Texas A&M tomorrow night. There's Kobe Brown, Dre Golston also here. But this has been a good first half alongside Shea Maloney. I'm Bo Bayman, and Shea, I think, again, the beginning of the third quarter could be very critical, whoever gets out quick. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Both teams back on the floor, getting ready for the third quarter. And we'll take our final halftime break. Again, our score, Hickman 29, Battle 28. We're back with the third quarter right after this. You're watching the game of the week on KZOU. Don't think about what, back what if what came you could graduate without student loan debt? What if you could have the college experience close to home? What if you could have hands-on training from highly skilled faculty? What if you could become the person you were meant to be? What if MACC was the college for you? When winter weather rolls in, the ABC 17 Storm Tracker rolls out, alerting you to live road conditions with the Storm Tracker 360 camera. Those neighborhood streets, those are getting a little treacherous. Tracking every angle, every move of severe weather's path, so you know exactly what to avoid before heading out. You're gonna have to be wary for those drifts. On the ground and in the Storm Track Weather Center, we're working together to keep you ahead of the storm. ABC 17 Storm Track Weather. You know that guy? The one who's not afraid to ask the tough questions? What goes into your decision making? The guy who not only gets the answers, but fact checks them too. This truth alert looks into how accurate some of the claims are. The guy who's looking out for your community. Why was there no step taken? Getting to the bottom of what matters most. Do you believe that's enough to ensure that these places are safe? Yeah, this guy. Anchor and investigative reporter Lucas Geisler. Only on ABC 17 News. Back at Battle High School as we get set for quarter number three. Hickman leading the homestanding Spartans by a score of 29 to 28. Alongside Shane Maloney, I'm Bo Bayman. Thanks as always for joining us and joining us all season long right here on KZOU with these high school games. We've had some dandies throughout the year. Had the buzzer beater of the Rockbridge girls beating Hickman girls. We had the Hickman Rockbridge game this past week. We've had a bunch, and we're happy to bring them to you and glad you watch on a Friday night or a Tuesday night. Makes the winter go by a little quicker as we're almost out of February. As we get set for 
quarter number three, it's Hickman in the black and Battle in the white uniforms. Hickman basketball to start the third quarter. It's Bonaparte, it's Stroop, it's Camp, Townsend. And I believe that's Nichols back into the game. It is. Stroop has it in the corner, wants to get it to Townsend, does. Now Nichols. Nichols, who got into foul trouble, didn't play much in the first half. Now Camp against Wiley. Wiley with the block, and McCubbin takes it away. Good job by McCubbin to Goolsby. Back to Patrick, but the Cupies recover on defense. Tay Patrick man in the point guard, and he's yet to get on the board. Handed it off between him and Rennell Holt, who had it there, McCubbin. A good job of pulling it back out, and the Spartans running some offense. Wiley comes through. Patrick for three right on cue. <laughs> Shea Maloney calls it, and he knocks down a triple, and the Spartans go up two. Just like Langston Stroop getting those first points in the second quarter for QBs being huge, that three-point shot by Patrick is huge for battle. Bonaparte from deep. That one no good, but Nichols is there for the rebound. Nichols drives into the lane, wants to hand off to Camp, does. Offensive foul, no basket. Brock Camp ran right into Ethan Wiley. Wiley stood his ground. I think in college he's probably in the circle. There's not one in high school. It's an offensive foul. Wiley erupted early with those nine points, and Hickman started to prioritize him defensively, but Wiley, is, it has not mattered for Wiley as he is dishing the ball off. He's playing great defense, blocking shots, and then he takes the charge there. So Wiley making his presence felt at all points of this game. Yeah, just the first foul on camp. Wiley with one himself. So both of those guys will probably stay in the game, you would think, maybe get a breather late in the third quarter, but they're going to be big because they're not in foul trouble as of right now to play these final two quarters. Goolsby triggers it in, and now Holt will bring it across half court. Holt picks up his dribble, McCubbin. McCubbin, really an unsung hero on this team. And he loses the ball as Stroop takes it away. Stroop to Bonaparte. Bonaparte wants to go to work against Goolsby. He does, and then backs it out to Nichols. A lot of inside, outside for the Cupies. Dribbling and getting the dribble penetration, but can't do anything with it. Camp spins. That time, Wiley bumps him. It won't go, but he'll go to the line. Both Camp and Wiley, pretty agile for big guys. That's the first time we really saw Wiley with a bump on the spin move by Camp. So Brock Camp goes to the line here. Free throws in the air and in the bucket. Thirty-one thirty makes this free throw and we're tied. The second for Camp, a little short. Rebounded by Goolsby. Goolsby hands it off to Holt. So the Spartans lead it by one. 31-30. 5.50 to go in the third. Camp now two for six on the free throw line. I have a feeling that those four missed shots might, might matter down the road here. Yeah, in a one-point game, you're right about that. Patrick teeing a long three. That one no good. Townsend doesn't grab it, did a good job of boxing out, but didn't grab the ball. Here's Holt for three, so the second time burns him. Holt is great with the ball in his hand, man in the point guard, but tonight he has shown he can be equally as dangerous with the catch and shoot. Here's a move and a nice move by Rasan Nichols. Nichols gets the two-pointer and it's 34-33. Wiley hands it back to Patrick. McCubbin, now Holt, Holt with 10 points. 
being guarded by Townsend. Again, Townsend did a great job on the box out, just didn't pick up the ball. Didn't have very many teammates for him to help him with the rebound either. The Spartans being very deliberate. Goolsby a T a three, that one no good. Camp has the rebound and gets it to Nichols. Nichols thought about running fast, then saw Goolsby. He goes around Goolsby, around Wiley, can't finish. McCubbin has it ahead to Patrick. Patrick will lay it off the glass with the left hand and can't get it to go. Here's Bonaparte. Stops, pops, and hits it. And Hickman has the lead at the four minute mark of the third quarter, 35-34. Missed opportunity there for yes. Patrick in battle. And a great rebound by McCubbin and then recognition. There's a one and one, and that's going to be on, it's going to be on Brock Camp. Camp with the foul as Holt went around his man, drove it to the bucket, laid it in, and drew the foul. Twelve points now for Holt. As Nichols comes out and Richardson comes back in for the Cupies. Wiley getting a break right now, I believe. Nope, he's down here. My apologies. Free throw is good. It's a two-point lead for the Spartans, 37-35. Keys is into the game for the Cupes with the basketball. Picked up his dribble, gave it to Stroop. Now Richardson. Bonaparte and Camp both out of the game for the QPs. Battle's gonna look to capitalize on that. Keys turns, wants to give it up, wants to set a screen. Richardson into the lane, can't get it to go, and it's knocked out of bounds. It'll go over to Battle. Keys got a hand on it, so did Richardson. And now they're gonna take Wiley out for Putnam while Camp's on the bench as well. This is what we talked about, that late third quarter breather so they can gear up for the final stretch. Spartans by two, 37-35. And what's been a dandy here tonight. Looks Rip. like Coach Logan's gonna counter with the Wiley. Yeah. With the removing Wiley and then he's gonna put Camp in here soon. Jack Putnam underneath with an easy layup. And the Spartans lead it by four. Richardson drives. Off the glass and good. Tough drive there as he gets it to go. Jordan Richardson with a beautiful drive. He has six. Left all alone for three is Xander Stevens. And Stevens has the three ball and it's a five point lead. Richardson into the lane again around Putnam. That one is up and under and in. Wow, what a move. Jordan Richardson makes that one. 42-39. Stroop plays defense, and Keyes grabs the rebound. Here comes Stroop. It's poked away by Putnam. Putnam's going to pick up his third. He doesn't like the call. We're under two minutes to go. Xander Stevens with a big three. Camp comes back in, and here comes Wiley right back in with him. So many talented scorers on both of these teams, but in the past minute, we just saw Jordan Richardson for Hickman and Xander Stevens for battle get big buckets of their own. Stroop will throw it in. He wants to go to Camp, does. Camp catches it over Wiley. Back to Stroop, Stroop. Oh, a little lefty. And that could be an offensive foul on Camp on the rebound. It will be, that'll be a second. Richardson's coming back in. Yeah. Second on Camp. 
Three team fouls on the Cupies, two on the Spartans. 145 to go in the third. Patrick has it. Will he use the screen from Wiley? He will. Switches off to camp. Tried the pick and roll. Hickman guarded it well. Mismatch underneath with Wiley if they can get him the basketball. Stevens stops, pops, hits. Boy, how good has Xander Stevens been? That's five in this quarter on two really nice looking shots. I think he can go a little bit unnoticed by Hickman here with all the talent around Stevens, but he is making them pay. McCubbin with the steal. Patrick lays it up and in. Tay Patrick off of the McCubbin steal and it's 46-39 battle. Stroop gets caught in the air. Townsend gets it to go. And a timeout by Cray Logan with 46.4 to go in the third. Hickman down five. They led by one at the break of halftime. So battle with an 18 point quarter and Hickman has scored only 12. And the scoring for the Spartans has come from a whole bunch of spots. When you talk about Stevens, you talk about Holt hit a big shot. Hasn't been too much from Ethan Wiley since the first quarter. No, no points since the first quarter, but after a nine point quarter like he had, Hickman's gonna start putting their attention on him and he's he's uh, clearing out space for the rest of his teammates to get some points of their own. Jack Putnam with the layup. Tay Patrick with the layup. Really even scoring for the Spartans. Wiley has nine. Five for Tay Patrick. Five also for Xander Stevens. Bonaparte has nine. And eight for Townsend. Meanwhile, Camp has six. Patrick brings it over, 46-41. Patrick nearly poked away. Now McCubbin open three, got it. Can't leave Tate McCubbin uncovered as he will knock it down as he does there. It's an eight point advantage. 22 seconds to go. Bonaparte loses it off his hands. It goes out of bounds back to battle. They've got a shot to make this a double-digit lead going into the fourth quarter now. 17 seconds as they throw the ball in. Bonaparte watching Tay Patrick. Patrick wanted to hand it off to McCubbin. Now four seconds. Here's Holt for a long three. That one's no good. Camp wants to throw it deep. He does. It's off the backboard. No good. So we are through three. It's 49-41 Spartans. You're watching the game of the week on KZOU. Race to savings on Patriot Lighting at Menards. Check out our great selection of lighting products and give any room a coordinated look. Patriot Lighting is available in so many unique styles and finishes, you're sure to find the right lighting solution for you. Race to savings on interior lights from Patriot Lighting and give your home the update it deserves. Check out our lighting showroom or see all our lighting options on Menards.com. Save big money at Menards. When severe weather is on the way, she's already there. Some of these cells producing some heavier rain and some lightning as they track in our direction. ABC 17 Storm Track Chief Meteorologist Jessica Hafner, working for you. We're going to be watching for all threats tonight. Some heroes wear capes, others track storms. Fulton at 849. Jessica Hafner, she's not just a meteorologist, she's Mid Missouri's Chief Meteorologist. Before winter weather can threaten our community, we alert you first with Weather Alert Days. On TV, online, and on the go, we never stop tracking. So no matter where you are, you'll know when winter weather is on its way. We are ABC 17 Storm Track Weather. And we're back at Battle High School for the fourth quarter. The final eight minutes of this one between Battle and Hickman. Battle leads at 49-41, outscoring the Cupies 21 to 12 in the third quarter were the Spartans and it'll be Spartan basketball to start this final eight minutes. 
Alongside Shane Maloney, I'm Bo Bayman. Glad you could join us here for the game of the week. As the Spartans want to run some clock a little bit. Wiley underneath. Lays it up and in with the left hand. And it's a double digit advantage for the home standing Spartans. Wiley reminding everyone he is still in the building with his first points since the first quarter. Townsend for three, that one no good, but Brock Camp has the rebound. Throws it out to Richardson. Richardson to Bonaparte, and Hickman will reset. There's Camp underneath, he'll score it. 51-43 for Camp, that's just his eighth point tonight. As you mentioned, Shea, he's missed some free throws. Goolsby picks up a loose ball. And now it's Patrick and Holt. They'll play catch. Holt drives the lane. left hand layup. No good. Rebounded by the Cupies. And Brock Camp is going to try to save the ball. He can't. It's out of bounds. Well, the Cupies want to run like that. I understand. But you've got to make a good outlet pass. You cannot turn that ball over. Yeah, you do. That was a missed opportunity there. After that last Camp bucket, he... Him and Wiley fist bumped on the way down the court. I, it's a great show of respect for each other in a game that's been dominated by the two of them. There's a backcourt violation on Tay Patrick. It'll go back over to the Cupies. And Nichols comes back in as Richardson will sit down. Stroop, Bonaparte, Camp, Nichols, and Townsend for Hickman. Going apart. Oh, nearly stolen by Holt. It's Holt, Patrick, Goolsby, McCubbin, and Wiley. And now Griffith is going to check in for Townsend. Townsend will take a break and Josiah Griffith comes in. Here's Bonaparte. Bonaparte with his team down eight. Camp be too methodical here if you're the Cupies. Griffith, Nichols, now Bonaparte. They're trying to get Camp open underneath. Camp wants to go to work. Wiley looking at the officials saying he's holding me off. In the corner. Passing up a shot. Good defense, good recover defense here by the Spartans. Wow. And a rebound off the missed shot by Goolsby. In the corner, three ball put up. It rattles no good. Wiley's there, and he's fouled. Wiley on the offensive glass. Goes to work, gets fouled, and he'll be rewarded with two. Down on the other side of the court, Griffith had a great ball fake. I think he should have taken that, taken that shot. I agree with you. Instead, Battle gets a stop, and now Wiley's at the line. And four fouls now on Nichols. Nichols has three points tonight. And look at Wiley. We mentioned he missed his first couple, but he's been good since then. Makes the first. Back to a nine-point lead. 5.46 to go. That one's in the air, and true. And it's back to 10. And now the Spartans are going to show some pressure. Might be token pressure full court, but Bonaparte picks up the ball. Griffith gets it back. And now Bonaparte splits the defense. McCubbin pokes it away. Goolsby picks it up. Goolsby ahead to Patrick. Patrick blocked by Stroop. But Stroop turns it over. McCubbin off the glass. No good. And here come the Cupies. Bone apart, teardrop good. And Craig Logan wants a timeout. He's got a couple left, so he takes one there. 53-45 probably has to set up the defense. Still 5.19 to go. We just saw battle press. I think that's a good idea. Even if they don't get the turnover, which they did, but even if they don't, it eats some clock for Hickman and... The clock is battle's best friend right now as they're up by eight points. Wiley's up to 13 points. 
Also with 13 is Holt. Leading the way for Hickman. On the floor right now is Bonaparte with 11. Looks like they're gonna put Rasan Nichols back in. Nichols is a 6'1 sophomore, but he's got four fouls. Brock Camp only has two. Ethan Wiley only has two. Really nobody in foul trouble for the Spartans outside of Jack Putnam, and I don't think we'll see him the rest of the night. No, it wouldn't surprise me if Wiley and Camp play these last five minutes straight. I agreed. Especially if you're going to call timeouts, give them a little rest. So it'll be Spartan basketball, 5.19 to go, leading by eight. Battle looking for the Spartan sweep against the QPs here tonight. As Holt gives it up to Goolsby. Goolsby's got a lane to the bucket, throws it off the bucket, no good. Rebound goes to the QPs. And here comes Nichols. Nichols in the corner. Three ball from Stroop, rattles in and out, no good. Camp underneath Nichols, got it. 53-47, Rasan Nichols now with five. We've seen Camp get a number of offensive rebounds tonight, but that might be the first time Hickman's capitalized on one. Yeah, absolutely, and a great pass by Brock Camp. Holt drives, stops, pops, it's gonna be short. Who grabs it? The Cupies. They got a two on oh, Nichols lays it in. Quick four for the Cupes. Out of the timeout, it's 53-49. I think Vernell Holt in a battle was a little too aggressive there. Yep. Like I mentioned earlier, they want to milk this clock as much as they can with the lead. Wiley fakes the handoff. He'll give it to McCubbin for three. Off the back iron, no good. Wiley tips it, and it goes right to the QP. Stroop lays it up, no good, but he's fouled by McCubbin. Good body control there by Langston Stroop as he drew the contact from McCubbin and then tried to lay it in, it didn't go, but that's the third on McCubbin. We're falling into a little bit of a pattern here. Battle dominated that first quarter. Hickman bounced back with the dominant second quarter. It was Battle's turn in the third quarter, and now Hickman's making a little run of their own, getting back in this game here in the fourth. Stroop with four points tonight. He's got two at the line. That one's good. Townsend comes back in as Griffith will sit down. Stroop will have another one. If he makes this, it's a two point game. Second one, a little strong. 53-50 in favor of battle. Patrick gets around Stroop, gets around Camp. Wants to go inside, can't do it. Stroop picks it off. Now Stroop. Battle gets back, Stroop a little short on the leaner. It won't go, here we go with Holt the other way. Holt picks it up, oh, a tough shot goes. And a timeout battle with 3.43 to go. The Spartans go back up five. Boy, it had a chance to be a one point game, but Stroop left it a little short on this end. The Spartans go the other way, and Holt makes a circus shot, he's got 15. Got a little chaotic there, so I think this timeout's going to help both teams settle back in. Still plenty of time in this game for Hickman to come back. Still plenty of time in this game for Battle to extend the lead. So far, it is a 9-6 quarter for Hickman right now. But the Spartans still lead it by five, as we mentioned. Going for the Spartan sweep, the girls beat Hickman. 57 to 50 in game one of our doubleheader tonight. It's been a good night of hoops and boy the basketball in Columbia this year, Shea, has been really good when you consider these two schools and you throw in Rockridge, it's been dynamite. Yeah, and we're looking at part of the Mizzou team again and we can extend it from high school to college as Mizzou's having a great year under first year head coach Dennis Gates as well. No doubt. Go for win number 20. That'll be at home tomorrow. Stroop inbounds, 3.43 to go. Spartans up by five. Interestingly, the QP's trying to set things up 
They've been better when they've been hurried. Townsend. Now Nichols wants to get it to Camp, does. Camp inside, gets the bucket to go, and it's a three-point game. Wiley, a good job of not fouling there. 55-52. Patrick nearly lost it. Nichols has to be careful with his four fouls. Stevens drives right down the lane, wants to lay it off. And Wiley picks it up. Now a three from Holt is short, no good. And, and Camp is out ahead of everybody. Camp is fouled from behind. Wiley actually lost his shoe there in all that mess. 2.55 to go. Brock Camp will go to the line to shoot a pair. This is, where, this is where Camp can correct those early misses on the free throw line. None bigger than these. Ethan Wiley gets his shoe back on on the other end. And they're going to clean up as Camp was knocked to the ground underneath the hoop. Boy, this late in the year, you don't want anybody slipping and falling on anything. So that's a good job by the officials. Okay, so Brock Camp goes to the line. Camp has 10 points. He's got two shots here. Pounds the ball three times, spins it in his hand. First free throw is good. Goolsby comes back in for a battle. And I think Wiley went to the bench. They're going to give him a quick breather. He was walking a little gingerly, too, after losing the shoe. So hope he's OK and can get back in this game. 55-53, second free throw coming from Camp. It is good. 55-54, Camp now with 12. Spartan basketball, clock runs, 2.50 to play in the fourth. It's Holt, giving it up to Goolsby. Back to Holt, on the switch, Camp has Holt. Holt goes around, no foul call, McCubbin underneath, he'll put it up and in. Big bucket there by Tate McCubbin. Back the other way, Brock Camp, into Goolsby, he scores the basket and one. Brock Camp with a big time move. Goolsby picks up his second foul, and Brock Camp will have the opportunity to make this a tie game. No surprise there as Wiley gets right back in the game. <laughs> Great job by Tate McCubbin on the other end to grab that loose ball and put it in. McCubbin has nine points. Here's Camp coming alive now in the fourth quarter. He has 14 points, a big free throw here. And it's good, we're tied at 57. 2.29 to go in the fourth. Buckle up for a wild finish here from Battle High School. Holt has it. Nearly stolen by Nichols. They'll give it to McCubbin. McCubbin around Stroop and the ball is kicked as he tried to pass it underneath to Wiley. One of the QPs got a foot on it. It'll remain battle basketball with 2.11 to go. McCubbin will trigger it in under the QP basket. Goolsby Wiley in there. Holt is in there, and so is Patrick. Patrick has it right now. Goolsby left all alone, misses the bunny. Camp has the rebound. Goolsby had a point blank shot and missed it. Here's Bonaparte with it for Hickman. And Bonaparte nearly loses the ball. Patrick playing the defense. Bonaparte around Patrick. A little floater, good. Isaiah Bonaparte with 13. And the Cupies have the lead, 59-57. Great job by Camp there, clearing out the lane for Bonaparte to get that finish too. Holt behind his back. Still has it, now gives it up to Patrick. 125 to go. McCubbin, left-handed dribble, cross court to Goolsby, drives baseline, puts it up, won't go, but a foul on Brock Camp. Goolsby went around Townsend. Camp had to come help. 
Camp picks up his third, and Goolsby will go to the line for two. And a good decision there by Goolsby not to take the three and to drive it. With 1.16 to go, Goolsby's first is in the air and true. Justin Goolsby, the senior, terrific on the football field. He's been really good here tonight. Second one is good. And Xander Stevens will check back in for Goolsby. Defensive substitution there. And the QPs will have it. We're tied at 59, 75 seconds to play. Bonaparte brings it up. Wants to go inside the camp, does. Oh, he had Bonaparte. But he goes to the baseline, puts it off the glass, and scores. It's a two-point QP lead under a minute to go, 61-59. Spartans with the ball, timeout by Ben Polardi. Sixty-one fifty-nine. Brock Camp has come alive here in the fourth. He has 17 points. I believe he had six coming into the quarter. So he has 11. As we have 51.1 seconds to go, and the Cupies lead it by two. The Cupies outscoring the Spartans so far this quarter, 20 to 10. It was 49-41 in favor of the Spartans. Now if you're the Spartans, Shay, what do you think? Uh, Go inside to Wiley? I would have to imagine they're drawing up a play for Wiley right now. Maybe a little inside-outside game where if the defense sucks to Wiley, he tries to find McCubbin for an open three. Yeah, we've also seen some pick-and-roll action yep. with Burnell holding Wiley, so maybe they go to that, but... They'll either use Wiley to get the points or they'll use Wiley to clear out space for a driving guard. 61-59 Hickman. 51.1 seconds to go. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. It'll be Patrick throwing it in. He'll try to get it to Holt in the backcourt. He does. Clock starts. Holt guarded by Nichols. Now Patrick. It's a high screen from Wiley. They try to give it to Wiley. Goolsby picks it up. That one nearly goes out of bounds. It does go out of bounds. Off the hands of Patrick. It'll be Hickman basketball. They try the pick and roll, but it was an errant pass. Goolsby did all he could to save it. Then Tay Patrick did all he could to save it. But in the end, it's Hickman basketball. And now Battle's going to set up some press. Which makes sense. If they try to get it in, they do to Bonaparte. And Bonaparte is fouled by Patrick. That's still just a team foul number six on the Spartans. It's the third on Patrick, but that doesn't really matter. As they will bring in Xander Stevens for Goolsby. A little offense defense switch there. Stevens will be there for the defense. The QBs will have to throw it in again. They'll try to get it to Bonaparte. And they'll call timeout instead. Stroop looked around. The QPs, a lot of the QPs went deep. Trying to isolate Bonaparte, he was covered well, and so they had to call a timeout. The QP still with one timeout left. And Bonaparte is the guy that Coach Logan is, wants to have the ball if and when Battle does foul. Bonaparte is usually pretty solid on the free throw line. Shay, one thing we should tell our viewers is there's still 36.5 to go, but the other part is Hickman only has five fouls. They have a foul to give, so if if Battle comes up the floor and they're far away, there could be a foul to where they have to throw the ball in again. Yeah, that's true. And it also might be a situation later on in the game where Battle is a Battle, four out of the five guys on the court right now for Battle can hit three-pointers yep. anytime they want. So Hickman might elect to use those fouls instead of risking that a big three by Battle. Another reminder is that the next foul will be just the one and one for Hickman. So it's not two shots. Sixty-one fifty-nine Cupies. 36.5 to go. 
It'll be Stroop throwing it in on the sideline, guarded by McCubbin. Bonaparte flashes free. He's open. Will they want to foul him? He wants to get it across half court. He does. Camp was wide open underneath, but the QBs do a good job. And now Stroop is fouled and fouled by Holt. A great job by the QBs. They had the opportunity to get it to Camp for a layup. They decided to run more clock. And that is Coach Logan putting faith in his free throw shooters. And Stroop will go to the charity stripe for a one and one, 26.4 to go. Cupy's up two, here's the, the first of the one and one. And it's good. Cupy's lead it by three. A big second free throw here from Stroop. Stroop is good on both, and it's a four-point game. 63-59, clock runs, under 25 to go. Here's Holt, way out top. Now he's going to drive in, drives in, can't get it to go. It's McCubbin again, he can't get it to go. Wiley will lay it in with the left hand. 10.2 seconds to go. Three chances there for the Spartans. They finally cash in. 63-61, 10.2 to go. Wiley with now 15 points as the Spartans battle back to within two. Battle on an 11 game winning streak. 17 and six overall, Hickman 16 and seven. The team separated by two points. Again, a foul will put the Cupies on the line, but it'll just be a one and one. Both coaches after the timeout strategizing. Both teams each with one timeout left. 10.2. Boy, Hickman was about a rebound away from sealing the victory there. They couldn't come down with it. Yeah, and it was smart by the players to kind of back away. When Wiley did get that rebound, yep. they, they, don't want, they didn't want a chance in and one. That's right. McCubbin took it away from camp after the first miss. He missed. Then Wiley was there, and he laid it in with the left hand. The whole time, however, ran about 16 seconds. So we're down to 10.2. You got McCubbin out there. You got Holt. You got Patrick. He's got Stevens, and you got Putnam. Wiley and Goolsby on the bench mainly for defense. Camp will throw it in. 10.2 to go. Gets it into Nichols and Nichols is fouled by Stevens. 9.4 to go. Fouls on Stevens. That's just his second. It'll be Rasan Nichols going to the line. They look to try to get to Bonaparte. Bonaparte went deep and then Nichols flashed back and that's who Camp threw it to. Yeah, and the Nichols tried to get it to Jimmy Townsend, yep. but couldn't in time, and now Nichols, first time at the free throw line tonight. Again, a one and one here. Cupies by two. Nichols with 9.4 seconds to go. First one is in the air, it's a little strong. Camp has the rebound! Out to Townsend, now to Stroop, and Stroop is fouled with 4.8 seconds to go. An offensive rebound by Brock Camp. Gives the Cupies another chance after Nichols misses the free throw and Stroop will go to the line where he will shoot a one and one. It's the last one and one. Camp's been getting offensive boards all night, but none bigger than that one. 4.8 seconds to go. Stroop to the line again. Langston Stroop. Free throw, rattles out, the ball is tipped, and it's a tie-up. It's a tie-up, that's gonna be Hickman's basketball. 2.4 seconds to go, and the next foul on battle is the double bonus. 2.4 to go, that one battled out, it won off of McCubbin, and then it was a tie-up. 
Battle got what they wished for with two straight missed free throws by Hickman, but they got to get the offense. They got to get the rebound. 1.7 to go. Struppel go back to the line as McCubbin commits the foul. I think that's going to be his fifth. It will. And so one of the three-point sharpshooters will be out for the Spartans. In case they miss, 1.7 to go. Goolsby comes back in. It's been a 12-point quarter for the Spartans. Meanwhile, it's been 22 for the QP so far. 63-61, two free throws could ice it. The first one, no good. No good by Stroop. And it's still a two-point game. If you're Hickman, you foul up three. Stroop's second one is good, now you foul. And Battle's gonna call its final timeout. 1.7 again. Don't forget, the Spartans are not in the bonus yet. I would let them catch it, and I'd foul them right away. They oh, have right to throw away. it in again. It's a 30-second timeout. Camp with 17. Bonaparte with 13. Stroop with 8. Townsend with eight. On the other side, you got Holt with 15. You got Wiley with 15. You got Goolsby with eight. It's 64-61, battle basketball, 1.7 seconds to go. I mean, it's our last game, John. We might as well make it fun, right? <laughs> Glad you could join us here on the networks of Mid-Missouri. So here we go. Goolsby will throw the ball in. Holt and Patrick are near half court. They want to throw it in. They do to Holt from half court. He launches! And it's too strong. And the Hickman Cupies win it. 64-61. The Cupies come from behind and win this game to move to 17-7. Snapping battles 11 game winning streak. What a great game from start to finish. Both teams going on runs throughout, but none bigger than the Hickman run in the fourth quarter there. Outscoring battle 23 to 12 in the fourth quarter. That was quite something. The Cupies get it done 64 61. Again, what we talked about earlier, this is a big game in seeding. When it comes to districts, they'll have those meetings. These two probably will meet again. Yeah. Yeah, and we said after the Battle Rockbridge game that these two that those two teams might meet again. We said after the Hickman Rockbridge <laughs> game that those two teams might meet again. I think no matter what matchup we get, it's going to be a good one in districts. All right. Well, that's going to do us. We want to remind you our first game was Battle beating Hickman in the girls game 57 to 50, and in the boys game, Hickman returns the favor, 64-61. Want to thank, again, our producer engineer, John Hook, our director, Cooper Bryant, Noah Ellitson, Matt Riley, Asher Marshman on the cameras, Curtis Varnes, the GM of the Networks of Mid-Missouri. Couldn't do it without you all. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for allowing us to bring you these basketball games. It's been a blast. For Shea Maloney, my name is Bo Bayman. We'll see you next week, next year, whenever we see you down the line. So long from Battle High School in the boys game, Hickman beats Battle 64-61. So long, everybody. Thanks for watching Columbia Public Schools live high school basketball coverage made possible through a partnership between the networks of Mid-Missouri, CPS Athletics, the Columbia Area Career Center, and these fine sponsors.